professionals. We're all professionals. Well, that works. Ah. Dad, Kyle! <laughs> I am helping! Yeah. I'm Talis and Jaffe. I'm no, Eric Aishi. Yeah, and this is Gather Daddy Your Sci Fi. Oh, God. Yeah, I are we going with sci fi or sci fi? Sci fi, well. Because we, we thought that sci fi was terribly clever because it's both Friday and, and so, science well, we fiction. Used, we, used to have a, we used to do a thing called Sci Fi Friday where every Friday we would. Why didn't you call movie. Sci Friday? Because it wasn't my party. I would have felt weird. It's like, also already a show. It's already a show. See? When was that? Oh my God! Oh! How did you hold on to that for so Jeff long? Uh, you know, when you're here, you know, you just gotta go all out. It was a good I'm, reveal. I'm so pleased. I just, I, okay, so we, this, his jacket sorry, sorry, started sorry. that, no, it's, you're fine, you're fine. His jacket started the discussion where I said sci-fi is in the necklines. Mm. Ooh. Look at, yes. look at these yeah. people. The, the weirder it lies, the mm. cooler and yeah. more futuristic it lives. Look, yeah. what's yeah. happening with his lapel? Doesn't matter. Future. Nope. Exactly. I'm wearing two and tank tops. He's two wearing tank two tops. tank tops. Two tank tops. And so, and mine, and mine has, has this weird, mm -hmm. like, like thing, there's some of its mesh. I don't know why. Why is it, so is two, it warm the two, in the, the future? The two sides no, of your dress cold. are having it's an cold. argument, it's and they're they're, they're, they're the just future. they're they're still working oh, and working yeah, together, but just barely. I mean, yes, yeah. 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 But like. <laughs> We're having a boob conversation three. over here now. Yes. Sci-fi right. right. and boobs. Sci-fi and boobs. Yeah. 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 Right. There's, there's usually some, like, you know, what do we call them in that? Well, in Relations and feelings? Boob, boob windows? Boob windows. In boob windows. Yeah. Boob yeah. windows. Yeah. Yeah. Like, That's about the present. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're like Lursen be Beethoven realness there, you know, yeah. where it's like, that's a warrior out there. That, that, that shit that didn't get designed by Klingons. I'm just saying. Anyway. Sorry. So the... The, the, no, the notion that I had for tonight, anyway, this was this was kind of my idea, is A, we, we wanted a kind of a low-key night. It's been a rough week. It's been it's been a rough week for everybody. It's been a very so rough week. So we, we thought we'd have a, a chill episode of Gather Your Party yeah, uh, at, on, nice. our, on our ch uh, chiller end of things. And we were like, what can we get a bunch of our friends together to talk about that they can just go and we can just sit here? <laughs> uh, science fiction, science turns fiction. out. So uh, this evening we're going to be talking about all of our favorite science fiction properties. We're going to be talking about science behind that and our ideas for the future. We had we have covered cyberpunk before. We have and a little bit in there. And I've and I've brought a little is, bit of that back oh my plus God, he plus some new stuff, glasses. some toys. As always, I brought some dumb toys. That's right. Um, so yeah, I the, if, mm, the, <laughs> those glasses are. Mm. I know right. it's a lot. <laughs> but I, but uh, we, we've gathered some of our our favorite science and science fiction people <laughs> ever. It's <laughs> good. Look, it's look so eyes. disconcerting. So good. So good. Uh, They're so good. You look like an anime villain. I, yes. I, I wanted yes. to look like that. Uh, I wanted to look like the guy you go to if you want like a better robotic arm. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. One that's slightly illegal. Yeah. Yeah. You want, yeah. If you want you want to be an og kid, I can help you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, yeah. Kasanagi is like tracking you right now and like has a picture of you up on the yeah. data screen. Yeah. The, really majors yeah. Yeah. the major is after you. The major the major is after you. Oh my uh, god. Just just in case, uh, not that I can already see that the chat knows who you are, but just just in case, uh, introduce yourself and where they can find you on a on a not Friday night. Me me? Yeah, you. Yeah. Oh, we hi. We shit here. Hi. Yeah, hi. I'm Kyle Hill. I do a show with Nerdist called Because Science. It has its own YouTube channel now and such. And yeah. I, uh, I, uh, I try to synthesize science and pop culture to kind of learn, uh, to, to help people learn about science and technology, engineering, and math by loving our favorite pop culture properties even more. And sci-fi is, of course, uh, very much a part of that. And you can find me... You know, just search my name, but not on Wikipedia because I am not the six foot seven uh, player on the Dallas Mavericks. Looking that up, right? Someone oh. keeps someone keeps changing his photo to mine. Oh, that was me. Wait, wait, wait. And, and people were like, "Wow, I didn't know you were on the Mavs." And I was like, "Yeah, I had a sick J." You know, you know what? I'm I selling apologize. that from now on. I'm like, Kyle's like my size. Yeah, I'm He's huge. Like, just dunks on people. It's ridiculous. No, that's canon now. He has two yeah. lives. Yeah, the the yeah. boards, the just the boards. Yeah, that's to me. Science. It's Science. jumper. jumper. Oh, okay. Jumper. Okay. Yeah. I also did not understand, but I just anyway. Uh, but yeah, okay. I'm I'm very I excited. You're si this is science, yeah. Kyle. Yeah, I'm That's I'm very excited. I'm science, Kyle. So uh, I have I have some very particular interests in my science fiction, which we. Oh my through. god! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm enjoying. Yeah. yeah see, I'm Changes enjoying Wikipedia. Wikipedia. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> they, they find they finally took the picture down with the. With no, the, because it keeps getting changed to me. That's but yeah. so great. Yeah, but mostly. Look at the edit history. Yeah. 
The uh, Kyle uh, Hill that pops up is new. Yeah, and we always did the oh NBA God. draft with 44 overall draft pick. Well done. Woo! Yeah. Look, what can I say? What can I say? I'm killing it. You do a lot of stuff. I, you know, I, I don't just come here and look super fly. I can, I can barely get to the gym. You do, yeah. but that's not all. Yeah, but it's not one my, thing. Although I do, le, I do kind of look like an NBA player at the end at the press conference. It's like, well, 110. percent You know, I'm just fully decked out. 110. percent uh, You know. They are the better team, but you know we got swept. And I'm I'm so team. glad that the glasses are actually reading perfectly on camera. Like oh, I yeah, just was taking look... that end of. Yep. Oh, oh, yeah. That is oh, that is the effect yeah. of looking at you. Hey, look, right look, now. look! I'm night I'm I'm Night Rider. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, another Cylon has made it onto the set. <laughs> this is the best thing I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> Moving down the line. Yes, yes Eliza. Oh, hello. I'm Eliza. I'm Eliza Pearl. I do things here. Uh, what, what am I supposed to I don't know. What oh, let's know, like, where they're here. Okay, What's your sorry. job? Uh, I, I work here. I do Nerdist news writing. <laughs> Why am I so weird right now? <laughs> um, and I'm on Shield of Tomorrow with this angel here. Hi. This angel baby. I, I like this. I like... What what it's it's like it's, it's like no but but it's like kind of Star Trekian as mm -hmm. well but the cape really throws it to I love it. Um, it's, it's I so should have nice. put a Star Trek pin on this. I feel so strange being at a sci-fi event not wearing Star Trek. It feels like just not right. You know what this is? You know what this is? It's what? Glamdo. Oh. Glamdo. Oh. Oh. Um, yeah, win that outfit in a card game. I, ha I, I have a, I have a whole feeling about this kind of outfit. That's that's because we were talking. I, I, I want to kind of like start a movement away from cosplay. about bounding. Yeah, uh, yeah. I want, I want, yeah. And this is an uh -huh. L. Hoffer, right? Uh, Katie exactly. L. Hoffer mm -hmm. does. Thank you, Hoffer. She made my my Hamilton dress, and then I also yes. wore the Loki. There, there, well, there's been a Loki the suit, Nerdist. Uh, jacket. Yeah, yeah I, I did the the Loki suit jacket and dress when I when I did the Nerdist uh, the marathon mm. and everything. Mm -hmm. And it's great because yeah, it's it's you still kind of look upscale and professional. Mm -hmm. But then also it's a little hint of the characters and the properties that you like, yeah. and yeah, it's great. Um, it's this is Bounding low key is the new cosplay. Yeah. La Lando, yeah. but also just a really great, this really is great line. Also very well made. Like when it arrived, I was like, oh, it's it's thick. It's like yeah. it's kind of warm. Yeah. Too like it's it's really good. It's, it's, it's very classic. So. Spectacular. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. It's, it's the it's the subtle nerd. Subtle nerd. For the glamorous nerd. Mm -hmm. For the glamorous Executive nerd. nerd. <laughs> executive nerd. <laughs> executive nerd, thank you. Executive nerd. There we are. Oh, nerd. somebody's got to have that one. Executive oh, yeah. and executive nerd. There it is. All right. Well, they do now. We lost it. If it like, it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. gone. Yeah. yeah. Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Loki Loki is pretty... pretty Loki Loki. Yeah, Loki Loki. Yeah, yeah. Loki, Loki. Yeah. Pretty solid. Mm -hmm. uh, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hi. Who are you? What you do? I don't know. Who am I? Please, someone tell me, I don't know. Um, I'm Rachel Seeley. I'm probably gonna cough a lot tonight. I'm sorry. Yoda is carrying my cough drops. Um, <laughs> I also call him the I'll Senator because he looks like Senator Bernie Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Also oh. failed to defeat him. Like, oh. little yeah. glasses? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Hello, so, here. Fight for the 99% we do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It was inevitable. Who it was inevitable. Am I? Come on. Um, I, <laughs> Who am I? I'm, no, I, don't I do that. the I do the D and D. I I do the D and D. With all the cool people. Then yeah. you do the D and D. Yes. Girls 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 I have my own game where I started DMing. Please don't yeah. listen to it. It's bad. Everyone, oh. listen to it. Chat, Chat is. You really ruined them. I think now. Yeah, yeah. They're like, I can't yeah. unsee yeah. that. No, I can't unsee. You, you can't won't unsee be able it. to unsee it. Yeah. yeah. He just needs Glasses, it's, it's, I'm going to make for him. It's it's it's, it's 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 like Bernie Sanders is like now a part of the new road company to space balls. Yes. Is like, absolutely. like it's yeah. yeah. You can make it like a pair of American girls all glasses. I yes. Oh, oh that is true. You'll do. Yeah. Yeah. I will do it. I will absolutely do that. Oh so yeah, that's God. who I am. Hi guys. Hi, hi. hi. Hello. So, so in, and in the back? Amy! I'm Amy Dallin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> may have seen me earlier today on Shield of Tomorrow. Uh, where we missed you very much, but luckily managed not to blow the ship up. Mm -hmm. uh, hey. relieved. Good. We did, did I really mess up some sensor rolls without you there. Oh, no. I'm so oh, sorry. Yeah, Please come back. I was like on leave because my Vulcan rage. You were you meditating. Week. Sorry, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> last week. Mm. True. It was it was epic. Uh, but I do lots of stuff here. Uh, I do went to Club of Talison. Uh, this week we had Eric on. It was super amazing. Can we talk about more. 
Claire Ellen Moore. Ooh. But then also I realized somebody pointed out that because I was filling in for Whitney Moore, I was pretending to be Whitney Moore. It was more and more. So it was a more and more and more and more. I know! That was so much more I than we ever hoped. And I, uh, more, more, more. On my own Twitch channel, we also started a book club where we've been reading a little sci-fi, so I'm extra. Oh, yes! Well, what are you reading right now? Uh, we are about to move on to, well, fantasy. Jorge Luis Borges is our next pick. Um, but we started out with Left Hand of Darkness because I'd always been meaning to read it. And then we read some uh, Nettie Okorfor, who's yes. super rad. And this was more information than I meant to do. It's my turn yeah. forever. No, no, no. Yeah, you, you, left an important, Amy. you left out an important piece of information in which you are internet sensation Amy Dolan. Yes. 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 Which Amy all Dolan. last weekend at the stream of many eyes, every time I saw her, I said as loud as I possibly could. It was pretty loud. Very internet sweet. sensation Amy Dolan. Why, hello. You guys, total strangers doing it, and yes. thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Wait, <laughs> did, <laughs> did B. Dave start your, that? It, Jody started Jody it. I thought it was Jody. Jody started it. it it's, it's a mess. It's Get it great. Trendy. And I'm great. very lucky. This is, this is, I'm also going to say, this is an auspicious uh, evening, because this is for the first time ever where I had a... Uh, uh, fiction themed uh, uh, gather your party and all of my writer friends are actually working. It's so nice. Uh, oh. Normally, they're so free. <laughs> They've got so <laughs> nothing going on. <laughs> I'm like, Good for you. <laughs> oh, hey, you're doing it. <laughs> you're doing it. You're really doing you're it. You're doing kid. great, sweetie. <laughs> you're, just a little more time, you'll never have to go outside again. You, yeah. are, you are becoming the ultimate indoor kid. I'm mm -hmm. so proud. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, B Dave. B Dave. Yes. Uh, B. Dave Walters, uh, co-host of Ask Your Black Geek Friend right now on Geek and Sundry. Uh, I was on We're Alive Frontier on Project Alpha. Uh, I also do a little bit of the Dungeons and the Dragoning on Maze Arcana. Uh, I have my own show starting uh, next week. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll be DMing. I'll be DMing. I'll, 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 a level 20 campaign. We're starting at level Whoa. 20. Whoa. Oh, that's yes. right. Yes. 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 Is it called yes. this escalated quickly? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it does. It, yeah, it, 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 it does. No, it, it, it all happens very abruptly. Yeah, and uh, I too do things at B. Dave Walters. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I'm not internet sensation Amy Dollar. Yeah. Hype manager in there. There Beautiful. it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my heart, muscle. My Dave heart, Walters. my. I spent the whole weekend doing that. Like any two people, I was like, "Allow you me were, to tell you." Yeah, no, yeah. You were like matchmaker at that event. You were just like bringing people. I'm like, you two, me. Yeah. Oh, you like the same no. obscure nerd stuff. Like trying to position us now to like kid, call now it super kid. Now, <laughs> now kid. Now kid. Uh, full disclosure, you and Sig, you guys did go like level oh, nine thousand. I'm, like, I'm well aware. Yeah, into the yeah. <laughs> Right, yeah, true. Oh. It yeah. went well. Yeah, it was uh, hot. It was hot. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's us putting it on the oh. True. I'll tell you after what's internet. <laughs> you really will. Write the fanfic. Tweet it's it. It's true. Out. It's true. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, also, I wanted to know uh, mm. what people's favorite science fiction. Oh my God, I Rachel has. I've had a lot of answers. For I didn't even. Know. Okay. Too many. All right. Go ahead. Okay. So, my favorite movie of all time is Metropolis. Like, oh, jeez, oh, sci-fi. That I is, love my yeah. Would you, is, is that considered, I, I specifically did so little research for this because I kind of actually wanted to, like, be grilled by a panel. Mm -hmm. Is that considered to be the first science fiction film? Film? I don't uh, know. I feel yeah. like, yeah. I don't think, I don't know. Trip to the Moon. Trip to the Moon. Trip to the Moon. Trip to the Moon. Trip to the Moon is, Because when, yeah, what year was Metropolis? Or, or what 20, era? I actually, uh, it was 30 in the 30s. I have heard it already in Metropolis. I have it right here. 27. No, what? 37. It was like 27 period. The way people spoke. Metropolis, it was, was released in 1927. Oh. We gotta get from hand to nose. I had it know. already loaded, as if I knew. Nice. Mm -hmm. As if you knew. Oh no, but can a trip you, to the a trip to the moon is like it, like the early, early, early days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that yeah. one was uh, a Melier film, and it was it is so wild, you guys. Um, that's the one where it's like the moon, the giant moon, and then the the which capsule hold, hits their thigh. Yeah, yeah, the and then like the moon, it hits your hits the ah, thigh there you go. stuff, okay. and then uh, and then they get out of the capsule. And there's like moon people. Moon nymphs. Yeah, yeah. And like gravity works real weird. And it's just, it's so wild. But like it's 1902 great. is within 10 years of the, the invention of film as we know mm -hmm. it, right? Yeah. yeah. I like it as an example of the fact that as soon as you give humans the power to imagine, one of the things we start imagining is places we can't go and futures we can't see. Exactly. Well, we, mm -hmm. and moon nymphs. Well, he, and here's, moon nymphs. Here's, here's the interesting thing about Alien Alive, because like, that, was, that was like one of the first depictions of of uh, alien alien life, 
is that the notion of alien life, of like the idea that w there could be people on these other celestial bodies that we just haven't uh, uh, been introduced to, started with a man named Percival Lowell. You know who Percival Lowell is. I was uh, kind of curious if you had if this if he was. One I of know the, I know the name off the top of my head. I would. You would know it from the Lowell effect, which is a which is a weird optical illusion. He built this really interesting telescope. Looked at Mars. Oh, whoa, whoa, okay, okay, okay. Right. okay. Yeah. <laughs> I knew. Yeah, no, 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 I knew no, if anybody here would no, know no, this. No, no, no. He started looking at Mars, and he 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 started imagining. He he would see these kind of trench-like, uh, ranching, city-like things. They were there. Yeah. Because because the microscope, the, the telescope he made yeah. was really faulty. Yeah. And so so he he built this up like you know there's life on Mars, life on Mars. Uh, there's a, there's a similar kind of thing with uh, the moon. Why the it's called a uh, Lunar Maria, the dark spots on the moon is because people used to think that they were seas, the mar, mm -hmm. oceans. Um, and that's just another resolution problem. Oh, we, have some, we have some Martian canals here, if anyone wants to. It's, they're not and really so very visible. People really Lamp believe this, right? Yeah. Like, oh yeah, they, I mean, up until the moment that they figured out that, there was, that, that it was an optical illusion generated by his very unusual uh, telescope, uh, yeah, there was the, uh, um, he published several books on it uh, in 19, 1895, 1906, and 1908. Um, yeah, and it wasn't until much uh, later that they figured out that, that they thought that maybe there had been a civilization on Mars that was now long gone, and this sparked the imagination of an enormous number of people. It, it did not necessarily end well. A, but. a lot of people <clears throat> would posit that uh, Shelley with, with Frankenstein's monster was the first sci-fi. First Western science fiction, first I would West, say. First Western mm -hmm. sci-fi. Ada Lovelace. Yep. What? And What's that? Ada what? Lovelace. Is it? What are you bringing? Um, there's this, this very, very old book that uh, Ada Lovelace wrote. She was, I think it's Ada Lovelace. She was a Dutch. No, no, it's not Ada Lovelace. It, she's a duchess. Catherine something that wrote this book where this expedition goes to the North Pole and they go through this this like wormhole to a different dimension mm. and it was written in the 1800s and it's considered to be by a vast majority the first sci-fi oh, wow. um, yeah. oh. I have researched this, I'd love to know that I name all of it mm. I did, it's Catherine Anna. something it's it's not I love Lovelace is the co-inventor of the proto yes. Yes. Like yes. mm -hmm. she's she's the coder uh, I'm no, sure somebody it's, in it's chat Duchess will know. Catherine like it's somebody. scrolling by. They're like, yeah. no, it's yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Like, chat, who like, is it? And Mary, Mary and Shelley hold my absence. Hold, hold my absence, Mary, Mary Shelley. I love the I, I love I'm loving that the, the, the story behind why she wrote Frankenstein. It was basically like her and her husband's friends all in like this lake house, and they went, yeah. hey, you want to have a drink and then go oh, write a short yeah. story? And she was like, yeah, dude, I'm down. And she goes and fucking she's like, I don't know, 16 or something, and she writes Frankenstein, and she comes back and she's like, bam. Here's your book, and they were like, "Oh, I wrote shit." Before it pauses, uh, "The Blazing World" by Margaret Cavendish, yes! Duchess of Newcastle. Yes, 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 yes. My God. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank you, chat. Damn. Wow. Yes, band. Uh, so it, it it is uh, supposed to be the first science fiction novel, Wait, but of course, a lot year? of people didn't want to talk about it because 1666. What? Yeah. What? Yeah, but no one wanted to talk about it because a woman wrote it. Yeah. What? Kind of woman did it. Oh, oh wow. wow, I'm missing a big chunk of my education here. I'm very excited. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 Thank you for the book. It, that really just kind of became like giving her credit for that really has just become a thing in like yeah, very recent absolutely. years. Okay, like, I feel very recent years. There are some incredible better. female authors that don't really get a whole lot to do, like Shirley Jackson does not get a whole lot to do. Oh my God, the, the lottery! lottery? The House? Wow. And, yeah, the lottery and... Like, yeah. no spoilers, yeah. guys, the but the lottery, like, um, best me. Are, are, are you okay? No, oh, are you okay? Is so no. good. Shirley no. Jackson okay. is a fucking genius. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna curse a lot tonight. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> That's okay, it's right? So oh, no. it's, it's so on so brand. It's so on brand for us. Yeah. Uh, uh, another it, overlooked. You ever, like, our, isn't our basic brand? It's like Mr. Rogers, but we say fuck. <laughs> I mean, Mr. Fucking, right Mr. Mr. fucking Rogers. Mr. Fucking Rogers. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I think within the past like five-ish years, people are finally starting to like give Octavia Butler. Yes. Oh, yeah. But I feel I'm like so before weird. that, uh, people didn't know. I'm so people scared. weren't aware. I, I'm not aware. <laughs> Octavia <laughs> Butler. She's oh, yes, an amazing. She was. Southern California based too, which is yep. awesome. Um, she's an amazing speculative fiction writer, African American woman, and she she just was <laughs> super dope. And she wrote speculative fiction that like it, there was a range of things that had like some historical fantasy fiction in them, and just straight up sci-fi and aliens and genetics and and just she was very prolific and very awesome. 
I heard oh. that HBO had, like options oh, some of yes. her stuff. Yes, that should be so Nadia Corfor, who's another like she's a modern writer, at who. Oh, who I've just yes. discovered in the, like, I've been hearing the name yeah. and then I sat down with it and so I'm in full, full, full throes. So far mm -hmm. I've just read Binti and uh, Kata. Great, which is yes, yes. Uh -huh. um, I need to catch up to you because <laughs> I've read uh, Binti, but I need to read the next one. And I need yeah. to read the sequels. It's a novella. Yeah. She's been winning all the mm -hmm. awards. It's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, Nydia Korfor has, I, I'm talking about Afrofuturism now for a second, just kind oh, of awesome. like Absolutely. swerving from Octavia Butler to just broader <laughs> Afrofuturism. Yeah. yeah, so Nydia Korfor is really awesome. She is like right now working on uh, a TV show based on her writing. And that's the one that George R.R. R. Martin is yeah. executive producing. So yeah, she's killing it, and we're gonna see some Afrofuturism soon. Mm -hmm. I don't know how soon to, in HBO, but yeah, I also did yeah. hear. Wait, yeah. hang on. Yeah. Not to interject, but now you have to define what Afrofuturism is for the people that don't know. Okay. Uh, for, for our five viewers who don't know, yeah. right. there <laughs> yeah. are viewers, but right. yeah. Well, Afrofuturism. No harm in not knowing a thing. <laughs> no, nothing wrong yeah, with not no, knowing. Yeah, no, lucky ten thousand. Not knowing a thing. Yes, please proceed. So Afrofuturism <laughs> is um, a type of speculative fiction and sci-fi that specifically either deals with the African diaspora in some direct way, written by people from the African diaspora, mm -hmm. or just imagines the world with an Afrocentric viewpoint. So, um, you know, a, for a lot of us growing up, we saw sci-fi that was kind of like from a lens of like, not many minorities. Mm -hmm. There's Lando <laughs> and her. Made it that yeah. far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And so Afrofuturism, it's not just as cut and dry as like, oh, there's minorities in it. There's, it's right. by black people. It's, it's also just kind of like thinking of a different alternate future. Um, this is another thing I'm spinning off into now, but a lot of sci-fi that we know and love like Star Wars and Star Trek and, and basically name any major sci-fi franchise in the last 50 years, is very, it comes out of like the fear of either the Cold War and uh, communism, or even before that, it comes from just fear of space and science, like the way that early sci-fi was like very much robots from Mars, like the fear was like anything that's not human, anything that's machine or mechanical or unnatural is scary to us. And then it turned into anything that's foreign, that's Eastern, that's com uh, Marxist or communist is scary to us. And so we have a lot of sci-fi that comes from the same like stem of this tree, but Afrofuturism just kind of branches off in a different direction. Very well put. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Maggie, I that was something. great. <laughs> yeah, that that was a very succinct, uh, like summary of it. Cool. Thank you so much. Yay! Thanks. Yeah, Metropolis is literally that. The, there's a female antagonist who is literally the like living embodiment of technology, just there to mess yeah. everything up. Right. Literally. You know, I was I, I said this on on the you know Wednesday Club, and I said mm. like you always see it's always about how science has gone too far. You never see anything about how science has not gone far enough. So ah. it needs. To so, go further. Go here's, here's an interesting, yeah. especially thing. if you want some, uh, you know, robot limbs. <laughs> I can show you. I can, I can, leg. I know, I can show you something. I want to put cool. something forward to you. Did you ever see the Tezuka remake of Metropolis, the animated it's, remake? It's of definitely Metropolis. not a remake. It's not a remake. It's oh. not in any way a remake. It was like he heard the term Metropolis and was like, it's about robots. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to do <laughs> well, a thing about robots called Metropolis. I, I, I actually, I, I, I have, I have a feeling about, I have a feeling about that film, and I want, but I want to put out there. Which is that the thing that the, the fascinating thing about Metropolis, I, I think, feel as a film, is that it happened before a lot of wars that we that we like. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of questions put forward in Metropolis that we mm -hmm. then had several wars that really answered the those. The first Metropolis, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we we're like, oh, that's what happens. That we now know what happens when a lot of these speculative ideas that are put forward like, happen. Like all of Tezuka's stuff, though, is like, but. The atom bomb happened. His, yeah. his like that's all. That's all. It basically I know. Is about. Well, yeah. his Metropolis is is what I think that is what I think Metropolis would have been with the knowledge of what in actually a different happened. Time Interesting. Of like Metropolis what, was really what fifty time. years of knowledge does yeah. to that story, where, oh, where instead of technology being this evil, this kind of evil, m m uh, malevolent creature. It's just sort of this innocent child who's sort of shoved into places and forced to do things. Uh -huh. It's really there's there's no there's no animus there. It's it's all just this 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 object that is sort of used and and abused by those who are trying to profit from it. It's really fascinating. Man, the yeah. itself would have been made in the shadow of very recent memory of uh, technology changing mm -hmm. warfare in terrifying ways, which like, you can absolutely yeah. see in the way that the aside from the fact that it has this big classist. Um, oh, yeah. Bullshit that it deals with. Metropolis uh, deals so much with the relationship between man and the common mass and machines and 
how the, the common folk and the, the larger chunk of people deal with their relationship to the machinery that they are creating and running and working and repairing. Well, they were also neck deep in the Industrial Revolution. Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you can absolutely see that. It, yeah. it just glows through. But there's this stark contrast. There are a couple of scenes that really stand out where you see this machine that looks like a mouth and it's like eating the workers that go through it. And you see rows and rows and rows of workers just doing menial tasks, just like on pull, levers, pull pushing lever, buttons. The and then you see this other actual utopia metropolis where they have high walls and everyone looks like an Olympian and it's just gardens and people are like playing frisbee out in the gardens. There's just two very stark different things mm -hmm. and in the higher upper class echelon kind of a thing you don't see any of the machinery. Mm -hmm. It's only the lower class is, that has to deal is, with it. Is, would, 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 before we move on to, to other people's favorite uh, thing, would, I, I've been trying to think about the notion of like, because I was, I watched a, a few um, of my favorite pieces uh, throughout the last, through the 20th century recently, and I, I feel like science fiction often is just, is kind of a, and I hate to use the, like a, a dark reflection of our, of, our, of our fears and hopes for the future, but you really, you get a sense of, of what people were feeling at the time that anything was made. You really, oh, yeah. you really, That's I why all, all science fiction is retrofuturism, yeah. mm. is because you really have to understand the sort of society and, and as you said, the hopes and the fears of everybody at the time. It's what everyone thinks is coming. I will yeah. also say, I don't, I don't know that you can always say that it's the dark reflection, because like Gene Roddenberry overtly set out to paint a yeah. better dark, future. Dark, that's, that's the fair. The most that's optimistic fair. Yeah. version of our future, I think, yeah. that's out there which is, is yeah. funny because Trek. Which yeah. is funny because Star Trek is optimistic for humans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't optimistic for everyone. And even well, we are, humans and the Federation, are warring with other entities and so it's funny that like so yes yeah, star trek still brings all of our issues into the future he was still constrained by his own sense of imperialism sure mm -hmm. but i mean like but he tried his best yeah. you know oh, no, no, no. i'm not negating this is a fan of no, master yeah, yeah. commander I'll, yeah. i'm putting that out there and mm -hmm. master commander in space is great yeah I'm a big right fan. yeah so we still have the militaristic elements oh sure. i'm not negating what you're saying i think both are true you know it's still it is the most optimistic sci-fi you know that we right. have there's One never the been well, but, there's never been a decade where we couldn't do better <laughs> right well, because Gene also hit like a super hard wall in early Next Generation, where they were like, times have changed, man. We gotta like, you know, the women get pants, and you know, yeah. they can have problems with each other. And he yeah. very much was like, no, that was one of his core ethos, was like, the main characters cannot have inner conflict. Like, they can't be upset with each other. And, uh, you know, um, uh, Robert D. Moore, um, no, not Robert D. Moore, Robert Battlestar Galactica, Robert yeah. Moore. Who yeah. Was, yeah, 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 Robert yeah. Moore. Yeah. yeah, he was like, uh, that's not a thing, Gene Roddenberry. Is Ronald Demore? Is he Demore? Yeah. Right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it wasn't until Roddenberry died. If you notice, this is why the first mm -hmm. couple uh, seasons of the Next Gen are kind of like, eh. And then it really heats up, and unfortunately, it's because right, your spirit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry. Right. right. Well, I'm actually. Okay. Oh, I took a different. <laughs> right. from, like, I, so, I attributed it to a different fact. Right, right. What's what's do you do you have a favorite? Uh, and, and it's all right if it's a veneer or no, it's, it's fine. I I I realize in here with y'all that I'm not I'm not really I'm not a man of history. I don't do a lot of. Uh, <laughs> uh, you're I, a man of. You're a man of I, today. Look, I I science. I, I, science. I, I mean, <laughs> that's the guy that destroys the world, by the way. But, the guy uh, that like, just builds shit yeah. out of but context. Like, but like like <laughs> I. The, the way the way that my mind works is it's I, I, I I'm looking at Chad and the, all the all the questions that they're asking like is Ring World unstable and stuff like that that's <laughs> that's that's what really gets me going and because that's the kind of thing that really gets me going uh, if you know me at all again I do not work for these people but if you are <laughs> if you are not watching The Expanse right now uh, uh, you should be watching The Expanse uh, um, I, would, like the I would I would I would easily argue easily. it is it is the Next most important, uh, mostly hard sci-fi show since Star Trek, easily. Mm -hmm. I, I I wouldn't say that lightly. It it is it you it it uses science and scientific accuracy as a character, not techno babble like Star Trek would do. Like mm -hmm. Star Trek was great, but they would say you know tachyon field, blah blah blah, wave pulses, and it was kind of just used as let's fill this dialogue. Sure, right. right. Mm -hmm. And a show like The Expanse, uh, space is a character. Um, uh, thrust is a character. Gravity is important. I've talked to the producers. They have their sheets of their scripts color coded for what kind of gravity that they're under, so that every actor on the set oh. knows how to move, oh, that's know, knows how to speak. Yeah. Um, that's really I mean, good. you know, uh, one of uh, there's a um, 
there's a character, so the Earth has uh, moved out into the solar system. I, I love these near future, not far future. This is a near future story when we've colonized, when we've colonized the solar system, but that's it. So people live on the belt, the asteroid belt. They call themselves Beltas. And uh, they live under very low gravity. And if you were to grow up under very low gravity, we know that when you go into space, for example, astronauts in the ISS, their spines elongate yeah. because you don't have the same constant oppressive pull of gravity down into the planet's surface. So belters tend to be taller and longer and more uh, kind of gangly. And so one of these characters it commits a uh, act of terrorism against Earth and so, as a punishment, they bring him as a as a like a, a, like a narratively interesting punishment. They bring him to Earth for interrogation because they know he won't be able to comfortably stand anywhere ever. So he's in constant pain. Like he's like, torture. "Get me out of like you got to get me back into space." He's hanging up on like kind of crutch things, mm -hmm. and and none of this is touted as like, "Look how scientifically accurate we're being." Isn't that cool? It's all a background. It's all a character, and uh, the acting is fantastic. Uh, there is, uh, of the main, main cast, one is a white guy, and that's it. There's five lead, diverse women in the main cast. It is, it is, a, it is a phenomenal, phenomenal show. I, I'm really happy it just got picked up by Amazon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It did. I was, I was actually in the room as Jeff, I was sitting <laughs> as, as far away as you are to me. That's where Jeff Bezos was. <laughs> and I saw him typing on his phone. Were talking you, to his people. Were you cheating on your Papa Musk? Maybe. <laughs> First of all, there's room in his heart for hey, two. Hey, oh, and, I'll, and also Musk. I'm gonna tell Elon Musk right now. Musk is kind of going off the rails right now. Uh, but, <laughs> but, but, uh, but I'm, I, huh. having been there, having met the. Uh, like the the showrunners and the actors, they all love the show. It's a family to them. They take it super super seriously. The little details they get right, like like in the first season, a character gets his head blown off by a railgun shot, and they're sit and there's and they're in their spaceship, but they're in zero g, and he gets his head shot off. When the camera pans back, the he's not bleeding. Right. The blood yeah. is pooling into a perfect sphere above his head. Because with no directionality, viscosity and surface tension would take over, and it forms just a blood orb above his head <laughs> until <laughs> until thrust until they're under thrust, and then it goes. Then, yeah. Oh, little man, stuff like that. It is such a good show, and watch it, and give me a cameo, but also watch yeah. it. <laughs> Have you, uh, have you That's read, awesome. Have you read any of uh, Werner Vinge's novels? No, like I have fire not. Fire upon the deep and a deep upon the waves. And no, stuff like that. Mm. super hard sci-fi. Yeah, stuff. and yeah, but, and those stories have been. Mm. I mean, the hard sci-fi yeah. has been going on forever. forever. I mean, like like fifties uh, and, and and novellas and. Uh, Kind of like these Flash Gordon-y stories. I mean, some of them have been very, very hard sci-fi, but I don't think until like maybe since Battlestar, The Expanse is the next show like that, and mm. it's oh, it's so good. I gotta catch up now. Oh, I so, know yeah. you, people you, have been telling me to watch The Expanse. All right, really. Yeah. I haven't. No, I'm, I'm, I've only seen a couple episodes, and I yeah, enjoyed it. I haven't, but I haven't I didn't. seen any of it. I'm yet. with you. I'm I just, all right. For me, I'm like sold. that's a lot of commitment. Keep I'm in. watching it. Does somebody want to? Like what hard sci-fi is? That's oh, the yeah. thing. I was I was oh, waiting oh, for sure. you to say it. For, I was and waiting for you to ask that. Questions. Like hard, What's hard sci-fi? Hard sci-fi <laughs> versus Amy, sociological sci-fi. Yeah, hard go for sci it. Oh, oh, yeah, well, they're they are fuzzy boundaries, and uh, getting too deep into the arguments over what counts is not necessarily the best use of your time. But they're very <laughs> useful boundaries for different categories of science fiction. Um, and hard science fiction is where you're attempting to either extrapolate into the future or imagine technologies that don't exist but that could if you obey, like trying to obey the laws of physics. So Star Wars doesn't really worry about this, and Star no. Wars does just fine. It doesn't Star have Wars. to for what yeah. it's doing. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's doing a different thing. Yeah. So but it's just fine. Wizards, wizards in space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. wizards in space. Yeah. <laughs> also, Chad, no one's forgetting about Babylon Five. How cool yeah, no, no one. <laughs> we only have so many you, breaths. These Babylon things, I, I, I find you, 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 you can get away. You, you can, you can avoid a lot of arguments. I tend to, and I know I've done this on the Wednesday Club. If you think of it less of boundaries and more like gravity. Well, the, the, it's just like hard sci-fi is a gravity, and things like veer in that direction. Yeah. Veer away, but yeah. it's well. Because I, there's like, a spectrum. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I talk to you know doing doing science here, well, science here, but thinking about sciencey <laughs> sciencey things sciences. in this uh, shapeless, formless void that we're in day in and day out. You know, sometimes I work with because we're in LA. There's actually in uh, 
in an organization called the Science and Entertainment Exchange, and it's basically a loan out oh, to any Hollywood movie or TV show or whatever. They get in touch with scientists that have the expertise they want, and then they put them in touch with the filmmakers. That's um, so cool. And what I hear talking to these scientists again and again and again, which I'll get, you know, I'm fine with, but I'll get to, is that um, there's always this tension between narrative and accuracy, mm -hmm. just like you're saying. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know the guy, the theoretical quantum physicist who works with Ant-Man, and he says, <laughs> and, you know, I, I ask him all these questions, he's like, yeah, 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 I'm like, but what about the mass thing? If you made a building really small, it would be so dense that it would go down to the center of the Earth. And he's like, yeah, no, I... He's I, like, shut up, man. No, 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 he's, he's like, like... That's what I said! Exactly, exactly. That, I know there oh is God. a mass problem, but... They chose to ignore it. Well, okay. And and for what you're trying to do, if narrative is trumping some form of tedium in some scene or some arc or some whole story, that's fine. If that's it, not what you're well, trying it's, to do, it's, 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 Albert Hitchcock had such a great line, which I'm just going to throw, which is that is it, people always ask why why they don't just go to the police in the movie. They don't go to the police because it's boring. Going <laughs> yeah, to the police is boring, and no one wants to watch I, that movie. Here's where I tag in as the storyteller. One, that's what makes it fiction. Yeah. yeah. Two, yeah. the only thing that matters is that it obeys its own internal rules. Sure. Yeah. Or uh, Bugs, enough to yeah. the point yeah. where you can where it's interesting and you can get away. Sure, with but it Bugs because... Bunny can reach behind his back and pull out a mallet because we've accepted Bugs Bunny can do that. But also, Superman Star can't do that. Star because, Trek. But Superman. really good at that as well. Yeah. They, like I said, they're not hard sci-fi in that they're not really applying, uh, you know, known scientific principles to the space that they're in, but they're very, very internally consistent with their bi they, like, their little term bible and all that stuff. They're internally consistent. So like you said, there are gradations to how, how, how hard or soft you are. Oh, yeah. uh, giggity. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it, now's the part. It depends yeah. on <laughs> it depends on what your story is trying to do. There's no there's no better or worse. It is just different shades of accuracy or not or narrative or not. It's fine. I, I will say this though, it, it is unnecessary to make statements that are like patently false. Like I remember it was uh, Prometheus, which was an awful movie that I hated. But uh, uh -oh. they oh, Tell us uh -oh. you know, it was an awful movie that I hated. Uh, but uh, it's like they gave the distance that they traveled was basically the distance yes. to Jupiter. Yes, it was. Like, I mean, like, there's no excuse for stuff like that. No, like, be, to yeah, be like, ac check. <laughs> actively wrong. It's like, yeah. well, that's a trillion miles away. Right. That's yeah. still yeah. here, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're like, right. maybe Google it. Yeah. Oh, I mean, and the, on the, on the, on that's, the, on the other end. That's not even, like, the worst part about that no. movie, but yeah. Oh, it is. No, it's not at all <laughs> the worst oh, part about thing, that movie. If you're going to say Parsec. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Maybe right. know what it's supposed to be. I mean, yeah, maybe. or like right. gigawatts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which I, oh, I was so embarrassed. <laughs> In, in my, in my, fr I have a, I have an engineering degree. In my first uh, thermodynamics class, I think maybe it was like one of the first classes. I asked, uh, "What's a gigawatt?" He's like gigahoo. And he's, and he's like, he was that just was saying good. gigawatt, was you good. dummy. And everyone no, laughed at me. But like, no, no, he's, yeah. he means a gigawatt, a billion joules per second. Yeah. Uh, and so I felt dumb forever. No, Aww. you shouldn't feel dumb no. because like. Well, but you I always him. it's my secret. I always <laughs> feel dumb. Yeah. Oh, it keeps you but you're a science man more. now. You're it, a science it, man. It keeps me grounded. Yeah. Much well, like grounded. Um, wait, uh, I want to bring up something because we're like the conversation's veering into this. I so I love space science. Yeah. You are a lover of science and sci-fi, and yeah. we all love sci-fi and science basically. And I I kind of like go back and forth about. Um, as someone who, I love sci-fi, I write sci-fi, I love space science, I learn space science, I'm a c perpetual student of space science and physics, and I'm like, I feel like there are a lot of people out there that, that don't um, understand like the, where the line is drawn. Do you in know terms what I mean? of what? In terms of like what is actual science and real and possible, and what is just straight up sci-fi and not real. Well, and it's like yeah. very fuzzy, I think, for some. And there's people. and there's been some blurring and, and crossing of lines. Like uh, you mentioned earlier, uh, when uh, when you're talking about there's a wormhole to another dimension, mm -hmm. and those are two really interesting theoretical concepts. We don't have any evidence of either. It's all just math. Like mm -hmm. to be clear, we've never found a wormhole. We don't have any evidence of uh, other dimensions. But they're awesome interesting concepts. It can be narratively interesting. But they don't even close to refer to the same thing. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, and and that's not their fault. But now, oh, yeah, but now yeah. that the terms have been so culturally penetrative 
that they start to be used that's interchangeably, what, like what, you say, yeah. and then you get confused, like, oh, that's a wormhole, right? Well, but like, I would also like to weigh in on this and the fact that mm. what constitutes as possible is constantly moving. Uh, I mean, sure, you know, when, sure, when, but Journey there is, the, when Journey to the Moon But there is written, a there is a floor to that, though. There right. are, there no, are no, 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 there's not. That's what I'm no. saying. Wait, no, no, wait, wait, wait. That's what I'm saying. The floor is something that shifts and changes, but I yeah. think a lot of people who maybe love sci-fi but don't know science or... Well, yeah, it would be in that direction. Maybe they don't know where that floor is sometimes. So I they don't think that's like, something that's that is a... particular to science fiction. I yeah. think that is a, a thing that uh, is yeah, particular actually, to narrative in that's general. That's a great point, And yeah. that everybody just needs to do more research in general mm -hmm. about things that are true or not true. Sometimes yeah. it really doesn't matter that as much because point. you can just enjoy a story for what it is. Um, and, you know, mixing mm -hmm. things up is just part of what our human and it, brains... And it's, but the question of historical accuracy, they, like, they, same. to your point, it's very similar. People are accepting the ideas you're putting forth, and sometimes it's fun to creatively depart from what would have happened, and sometimes you're doing a disservice by, let's say, forgetting <laughs> to include swaths of people in the past. But, True, there's still, right. there are organizations where also uh, there are historians that are, that are consulted for uh, historical fiction yeah. films, mm -hmm. and they also are like, but that actually didn't happen, right. or, or well, actually, they really wouldn't have been in conflict at this point, but <coughs> narratively, it's yeah. just more interesting. So sci-fi sci sci is a weird place in that we kind of all culturally agree on where the floor of our suspension <laughs> yeah, of belief then, is, wait, well, and then, you, then you can go beyond that. Wait, 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 no, I have to say important <laughs> words. I have to say something important. The function of the writer, the function of the creative person is to move forward society and to push those boundaries. It is no coincidence that the people who went to the moon grew up reading stories from H.G. Wells talking about going to the moon. Uh -huh. It's no coincidence that the people that grew up watching Star Trek with them having data pads made Kindles and iPads. I will, I will like, also, it, I'll also say there, there was uh, about eight years ago, seven years ago, there were a group of British scientists who figured out a way of vibrating a, uh, a screw out of a, uh, a, a, mm -hmm. out of a bolt. Sonic. Because... Figuring out a way to unscrew something with sonic waves was literally what they decided oh, was ab most absolutely. important. And there's an, an, a really great article in Vanity Fair we maybe don't need it. five but years back or so I mean, about how uh, the influence of entertainment, science fiction and entertainment on science in the real world and vice versa. Oh, yeah. It is absolutely <laughs> reciprocal. And yeah. like, yeah. Uh, you, you go into NASA or JPL right now and ask them to raise their hands, you know, who wanted to be Dr. Spock in here? Right, <laughs> and a lot of them will raise their hands, uh, and uh, yeah, it, it's kind of it, as we we create these stories, we push the ideas forward, and then we try to create these in real life, which give ideas back to the creators. And like you said, it is a function to push uh, to push that forward. I wouldn't say that it's intrinsic that you have to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you can no. you can tell the stories that you want to tell, of course. Sure. Um, but I think that is what is so. Uh, so interesting about science fiction in relation to almost any other genre in which you can predict something to technologically change or to change our knowledge of the universe and it might happen for real. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's yep. the thing that I really love about science fiction is that science posits something. They say, well, what if this, what if a wormhole would yeah. lead to an alternate dimension? And then science fiction comes in and goes, yeah, that's great, but what about this? Yeah. What if it does mm -hmm. this? And like shows like that are heavier on the fiction, on that side of the spectrum, like Farscape, that deal with boy, potentially, boy, and then we go Farscape. this way. We go this direction, boy, Farscape. and then we go yep. through this entire if, other spectrum. If chat has not seen thing. Farscape, I'm about three I quarters not. through Farscape. I've been well, making my way through Farscape it. Wait, so wait did, did, I mean, did I misspeak? Who's, is hmm? Dr. Spock not Mr. Spock. Mr. Spock. No, he's Mr. Spock, he's Mr. Spock and, and Dr. Oh, yeah, he didn't have any PhDs. Yeah. No. 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 He did. Wow. I mean, the book about babies. Well, impressive. <laughs> yeah. Impressive, man. <laughs> I, 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 but, we, but you see the zone of safety you're in? None of us called you on that. No, we no. all knew. Yeah. We, we knew let it were talking No, about. you yeah. definitely right. should have, because yeah. I have just brought the show to a screeching halt. It's true, Dr. Spock is the baby guy. See, that is true. Everything has a moment. I went I went to see Black Panther with like three or four um uh, biologists and paleontologists and like and like and just like the moment that rhino showed up for him like oh no oh, oh, I don't know like, how I feel about what that is you doing? <laughs> oh, no. they're, like, they're like oh oh that doesn't work right <laughs> I just appreciate that that was the deal breaker. That was you the know, only like, thing they're like, it was great, except for that like, rhino, like, man. I don't know the what they're feeding world. those rhinos over there, but that ain't right. Like, that old blade, yeah, but totally not the rhino. Yeah, um, I, I was the rest, 
the rest was fine. They're like, I'm into it. And then that rhino show up. And they're like, I'm, I'm not sure. We're, we're, we're deviating all over the place. And there's, we are. there's going to be no point for me to like in, in, inject this in like a conversationally appropriate way since you're going to say it. Say it. So back Do when it. you were talking about Frankenstein, one of my favorite stories mm. is when Robert Louis, Louis Stevenson wrote Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. He wrote yes. it and he gave it to his wife and it freaked her out to the point of catatonia. Catatonia. And he got upset and he threw it in the fire because it freaked her out so much. What? And then he, wait, yeah, he wait, wait. And then he what? was like, what have I done? You know, if I really wrote something that good and he sat down and rewrote it. So and he, good! And he always said it was never as good. He was like, the second... What did she say about the second draft? I mean, apparently she Pro- made Probably. It yeah, right. Uh, she probably didn't read the second version. She was like, no, yeah. I'm good. This is horrifying! Yep. I'm so... Yeah, I... Yep. What? Yep. Okay, yep. but was he yep. had a Tony or was she like, this is real bad and I don't know how to tell him? Oh! oh. oh. Yeah. She got there's, the papers? There's, oh. a list, there's a list online of things that women have <laughs> passed out from in, like, old literature. One of them's, like, not enough pillows. It's it's. It was, stupid. like, the, the list of yeah. reasons people got committed to a particular facility. Oh, my God, that yeah. one's horrifying. Too many men, not enough men reading. True. This one is just all yeah. in literature. All the things that women have passed out from in literature, like... <laughs> The wrong slippers. Eh. Okay. It's stupid shit like that. <laughs> yeah. Too many pillows. Not enough pillows was another is this, one. Do you mean in the literature? The, 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 the only one that the only oh, one that we've been able. I will say at Renaissance Fair, the only one we've actually been able to come up with that makes any sense is bad corsetry. Yeah. Well, yeah. duh. Because if you're wearing one, and someone goes up, boo, and you're. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, oh, I, I have like, done oh, that. I have done yeah. that. Although the, the, the prescriptive <laughs> orgasm treatments probably didn't get too much like. Uh, too oh, much and they were hysteria. They were, they were right, putting yeah. iodine yeah. in. They were doing right, some weird shit. To people. <laughs> oh. They were like, this will this will straighten you right out. <laughs> Old school biology was sad, man. Well, I mean, I, think, yeah, I, I we posted got that on Twitter. It was like old doctors were because weird. That, they were like, "You've got ghosts. Do some coke yeah. and go." <laughs> yeah, people some, people wanted to, to know yeah. about the human body, but they didn't want to touch the human body. Yeah. yeah. Wait, when were we were we talking? Well, we were we talking were. about in the goth in goth in goth night. We were talking about dissection of human bodies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There yeah. were there were there were public public dissections yeah. were, were a common thing for, and you would and there were. It was very in vogue, and the like grave robbing, yeah, grave yeah. robbing, uh, dude, because yeah, they didn't have enough cadavers. Yeah. Robert Greene's book, uh, Mastery, he talks about a guy whose name completely eludes me, but the the dude who figured out that how infections transmitted, like, and he knew for sure, like, oh, you we get, you're polluted, you touch something, and you transmit it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But and of course, nobody believed him. But the dude was like a raging douchebag, mm-hmm. and so people personally didn't like him. They were like, first of all, it's not. Isn't Possible. there the, isn't Second there a all, series Second about shut up. No, 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 it, 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 it literally took like 150 years for it to catch on. Because like everybody was like, right. screw that guy uh, and his yeah. infections. <laughs> There's... I, 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 I don't know, this is a little tangential, but this reminded me of, of, of an interesting theory that was recently put forward for like the notion of why spiritualism took over for the 19th century. Oh, we were talking about that for Gather Your Ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, 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 and the great theory that came up with was low-level gas, gas, poison, light. gas poisoning. Gas lighting. Because gas everyone lighting. had gaslighting in their houses, oh. and it was leaking all the so they were time. Like, so, but that's yeah. so, one of the so reasons, too, why... When we think of ghosts, we think of them wearing Victorian (laughs) garb. Because that's when everybody started seeing them. Because that's when gas lights in the home took off. Yeah, Yeah, and so it's just everyone, like any of those old heads, like people would get paranoid and weird with each other and start to see things at night because they're. What do you they're, mean? Sleep, I, they're sleeping with four years worth of a gas leak in their house. That is the equivalent for us right now, and we just don't know it. There is. I feel that way. I mean, Without a feel, doubt. Yeah, right, yeah. Oh my God, what is it, guys? Yeah. I always think, like, in the because I actually occupy a, an odd space where I think, like, spirits and stuff like that exist, and I'm always deeply disappointed when it's like, no, it's carbon monoxide. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> but, but I do always think in the future, like, if there's, like, a way to, like, look at footage of this, like, in the year 600, and they're like, look at all those ghosts that were around them. <laughs> wait, 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 why, why, oh, why, well, why, why, why is it disappointing to you? Why is it disappointing to you when you find out what the answer is? Hang on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back to that. I am gonna answer that. But this but is, this is a thing that, that. Uh, <laughs> a buddy of mine has a, um, uh, an <laughs> LP of just... Skip James, like an old uh, Skip James LP mm-hmm. from like the 20s or 30s, whenever he was playing. And my buddy's got this multi-million dollar studio and we were listening to it, and like, there's this like rhythmic thumping, and we couldn't figure out what it was. And it's like, while Skip James was playing, he's tapping his foot. And you couldn't hear it on the album until like the speakers got good enough that you're like, oh, that's what that is, you know? So it's true, who knows what's being recorded. Now, why was that a disappointment? Yeah. Um, 
I accepted it as the truth. I didn't reject it as the truth. What, the but, foot thumping? Or you uh, no, the, the ghost thing. Like, oh, okay. when, when I was like, oh, hey, this house is haunted. And you're like, nope, it's a gas leak. And it's oh. like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, I wouldn't be like, no, it's really still it's haunted. It's because you want to believe. Yeah. yeah. It's believe but I mean, I think anybody you does. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's the same thing like when you enter a new relationship. You're like, oh, I think it's going to work out this time. Nope, she is, in fact, uh, nope, not the one. Nope, it's a gas leak. Yeah, it's a gas leak. <laughs> it's a gas leak. <laughs> I've been making out with myself this entire time, Towson. <laughs> they don't even know what you're <laughs> referencing to anymore because we did that before, before the stuck joke was before the That was screen. before we went oh, live. Yeah, that's true. You're going to need... Oh, oh, man. Oh, dear. Uh, that wow. one's on me now. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, it, to your point, I think ultimately the quest for truth is more important. But, you know, when, when you have <laughs> a thing that you wish was to be the case, you know, just for a sake of wonder. It's going to be our gas leak episode. Yeah. <laughs> gas leak episode. Maybe we're not even yeah. here right now, man. I don't know, but yeah. Oh this is this is all, I think, I love that we've gone into this tangent about science and scientific thinking and everything. One thing I love about science is that it is constantly trying to prove itself wrong. Yeah. yeah. That's mm. like the safest way to live, I think. It, it, you yeah. know, I make the argument that I'm very much of the school of thought that science advances one funeral at a time, though. I think there's people that hold on to their pet theories oh, and sure. they fight and fight and fight and reject and reject and reject everything. Oh, of course, because yeah. that's that's human nature, but that's yeah. not the science. That's Isaac fault. Newton. That's right scientism. That's it's scientism. Our you're, you're, you're true. Yes. Yeah, right. that's, that, that's our fault. That's not the empirical methods' fault. Right. It's not. You're right. It is not, in fact, the scientific methods' fault. But I know people that are every much the religious zealot for their pet theory of That's a, a whole thing. separate argument. Yeah. That yeah. Is no, 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 I'm, no, I'm, I'm saying, argument. like, yeah, you are absolutely correct that science is 100% Science what you is said. pure. 100%. So, science is 100%. So, as we've gone this far, yeah. uh, Dave, what, what, what's your favorite science fiction, science fiction, uh... Mm -hmm. uh you. Uh, you know, I hate to say this, because as you, as you tell it to me right now, and the thought forms in my mind, uh, two years ago, I would have said Star Wars without hesitating. Mm. But I've been underwhelmed by the last three Star Wars films, so I think it still occupies that place in my heart. I've but always, not with the I've also been, I've always been a little iffy on calling it sci-fi. I will admit, Star Wars, Star Wars is always yeah. Fantasy. It's a space I, opera. I, I, I don't, I don't discount anybody who considers it sci-fi. I have no argument about it. But in my mind, it's always I could just consider it a, a, like fantasy with a sci-fi veneer. It's well, a, but, a, but, a, but a poem I, in yeah. space. Well, uh, yes. Yes, but I do the think that the, the, the technological yeah. components of it are pretty pivotal, though. Yeah, yeah. but you, you can you can reskin it as a fantasy novel and nothing changes. Easily. Well, yeah, but I mean, did, Harry Potter Aragon. and Lord of the that Rings is, and Star Aragon, Wars and the Matrix are all the exact same story. So, I mean, I mean that what, doesn't... So, mm, and keep in mind, too, like, what we were talking about before... This has come up a couple mm. times in this conversation. Like, there are branches of speculative fiction, mm -hmm. and they kind of branch into each other. There are spectrums of, like, you know, hard sci fi that's closer to that density, and some that's out. So, like, I think Star Wars does the same thing. It's not entirely sci fi, it's not entirely fantasy because it, you know, it's, it, it is in the realm of sci fi as well. It's on the outer rim of that gravity. But it's, <laughs> but it's, but it's, it's like yeah, between the two. It. It's not just mm -hmm. on the outer rim of sci fi, but it is between fantasy and maybe even a little bit more. Getting pulled. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Total Curveball, Total Curveball, then, mm. are the Marvel movie science fiction? Sure. Yeah, Doc. Yeah, Because, absolutely. like, they get their powers from accidents? There's, no, I mean, I mean, uh, Tony Stark's entire entire basis for all his powers, I'd say, I'll is his that. research, right? Yeah. And but what yeah. about Thor? Well, it's it's it's, uh, yeah. it's no, magic. No, I'm not saying they're not. I'm, no, I'm well, just, yeah. well, his his explanation right. is it's you know science that we don't understand yet. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. it's, 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 not, not every Marvel film is science, science fiction. But no, the Marvel well, film. I mean, like Doctor Strange kind of starts to blur that line, but yeah, in yeah, my right. mind, pretty much every Marvel movie is somewhat grounded in, in sci-fi, yeah. uh, more cool. so than other science fiction films. I, I, that. I mean, I think I agree. I mean, it's more hypothetical, really. I kind of think anything that has aliens in it is within the sci-fi realm. Right. Mm -hmm. Whether yes. it has other elements of other types yeah, of maybe. genre. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know what I mean? That's not the only defining thing, obviously. No, but it's hard to... It it's, 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 it's like, uh, it's like, uh, the lo you know, like yeah. logically, is it necessary? And, yeah. Right, you know, right. Is it necessary and sufficient? Like, Right, but right, exactly. aliens usually has to be in there somewhere, or if it is in there, it's I'm, probably. I'm, yeah. I'm, right. I'm flashing the little clip from the Wreck-It Ralph video with the princesses. <laughs> yeah. Do you talk to Do you talk to animals? Right. Do you have aliens? Right. Do you have it's sci-fi. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you have technology? Are there droids? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I guess 
Yeah, same uh, thing, like anything with robots. Robots is kind of a big indicator, I robots think. Robots is a big in indicator. I, I'm, 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 there's, there's a few things that I'm now meditating about with yeah. uh, I always, I always forget the exact wording of it. Any sufficiently advanced technologies indistinguishable mm -hmm. from, from magic. magic. Yep. Is, that a, is that a Ray Bradbury? Or is that it's a Clark. Clark. Arthur C. Clark. Arthur C. Clark. Imagine, Clark. imagine going back a thousand years with an iPhone and showing it to somebody. Exactly! Oh. You'd be murdered! Instantly murdered. Actually, one of, one of my, <laughs> one of my favorite, uh, Connecticut what, Yankee. Went back King in time Arthur's and court. was murdered? Oh, well, yeah. Connecticut, Connecticut, Arthur, Arthur's Arthur's court. Court. Connecticut Yankee King Arthur's Court. Yankee King Arthur's Court. And then Disney made a film out of it, which was kind of fun. Wait, what's the, what's the Martin Lawrence film as well? No, that's, you got me on that one. Oh, wait, yeah, Dark, I just remember there's a Martin Lawrence film when he goes back in time into, uh, like, medieval ages and he, Oh, he blinds yeah. a guy with a CD disc, uh, a right, CD right, disc right, uh, right, laser, right. laser radar. No, he's like, there's, there's some there's super stuff so in there, like in the, the Black Knight or something. Yeah. Like it's okay. really oh, like something yeah. like super Black Knight. Basic. That was, that was, that there, there's yeah. there's a there's a Disney Black version of yeah. of a oh, of Black a Knight. Hey. King, King, King Arthur's court. It's a King Arthur's court. And he's an astronaut, and he ends up there. And like like one of the things he does is he he magnetizes his he has to get into a duel, and he magnetizes his sword by hitting like gets gets it to point north, like hits it with a hammer really hard. And then, like, gets into a fight, and the guy's trying to use the sword, but he keeps sticking to the armor, and he can't move it. Wow. It's really just ridiculous back, and great. Back to the Future 3, his little, yeah. like, field he was able to make, and, like, mm -hmm. the bullets. Yeah. Oh, no, that right. was Star yeah. Trek. In the Walk original Connecticut field. Yankee and uh, King Arthur's Court. Sorry. Oh, okay. No, no, sorry, please. Sorry, mm -hmm. sorry. Uh, the original Connecticut Yankee, yeah, it's just... Got, he's got a lot of technology, Wait, and so Merlin, who yet. is a magician, is like really jealous of him because he thinks he's like a rival magician, and he's the one that ends up, you know, being a downfall. So, so. super damn nerdy is that they eventually did an adaptation yeah. of the Connecticut Yankee and King Arthur's Court for the Transformers animated series, they and what? the Transformers went and met King Arthur, yep. and were like fighting uh, like like one of the evil wizards by yep. like using their tires to like be grounded against his lightning bolts and yep. then eventually like <laughs> they hit him with like a magic Science missile fiction. and then they find out that they were he was just making gunpowder out of out of bird droppings and they're like oh well, that explains a lot. He's just like he's just doing chemistry Wait, shit. So yeah. Transformers yep. yeah. basically depoted. <laughs> it, it was some weird. It was either, the, it was either a GoBots or Transformers. I'm gonna have to dig it up, but it was oh one of those. Like, there were robots, and it was an '80s cartoon. Who are transforming cars? <laughs> Where does that fit into hard sci-fi? Yeah. Oh. Well, uh, That's it, it, to okay. Michael Bay, to Michael Ooh. Bay's credit, which is Ooh. not a statement that gets uttered often, yeah. uh, at least in the first couple movies, he really made sure that their trans when they transformed, the that parts were all accounted for. Right. So I mean, the cartoon that didn't happen at all. No. You know, like Megatron yeah. was a Walter yeah. Yeah. So and then came back. The, out. The, the, yeah. the, the giant robot thing comes from Japan. And that's J Japanese science fiction, and and they have a long and complicated history with robots and how they feel about them. And yeah, man, there's in no way some weird cultural father figure that we can like examine the relationship between teenage boys missing fathers and giant robots that they either sit on the shoulders of or get inside of to find their power. That's a whole thing. Yeah. That's a whole thing. Like, yeah. Yeah, man. You know, you blew so many minds when you just said that. that oh. Like, oh. <laughs> like, what? what else are the Jedi not telling me? Oh. I'm going to go cop outside. Don't talk about the fiction I expect without me. Because that's where I am really <laughs> yeah. And Yoda's going to see you're, 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 We'll keep Senator Sanders here with us. We're just going to... I've got a, I've got a uh, weird question... Has has anybody here uh, ever heard of Doctor Quatermass? Is that yes? What is that? Uh, and his experiments. Quatermass in the pit was the big one. Yes. What is that? Uh, I, I, is, I, I, my uh, my colleague Kyle Anderson has written about these films, but they're these uh, these old. They're kind of hard sci-fi. They are hard yeah. sci-fi. Where it's just like most of the sets are just giant bl uh, blinking panels and just scientists <laughs> like. Uh, ah. Damn! It just keeps growing. <laughs> I don't know what we're gonna do. And then, like twenty minutes later, still at the panel, it's like, well, I still don't know what we're gonna do. I mean, that sounds riveting. I probably need to science or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it was it was uh, Doctor Quatermass. It was a fascinating nineteen fifties British television character. They eventually uh, uh, eventually the character was moved to film. Uh, they made several films with the the Hammer Horror yes. Company. We're like, we're gonna make some sci fi films. And they did pretty well. Uh, they had, I think they made about three, four, five of them. There was also a 2005 television, live television special with David Tennant that was interesting. Uh, <laughs> it was, it, I watched it for David Tennant and went, that happened. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you can probably find it it's on Amazon. I feel about the Eighth Doctor's movie, for the record. But I liked that he was. He, the whole idea was it was like it was like that was the. I was trying to find the earliest super scientist of the idea of this mm. guy who sure. was building. He was a rocket he, rocket scientist who was building rockets during the war, and then just basically had a breakdown over it. Was like I that 
I can't do that again. That was just awful. Mm, yeah. And, and I don't want to be responsible. And so it sort of becomes like super science guy and they find, uh, well, the pit is the big one, which is that they find an unexploded um, Nazi weapon. They're, they're demolishing a, a building in London and they find what they think is some sort of like weird unexploded bomb or mine from the war. And then they get into it and they're like, we don't think it's from this planet. We don't know what this is. And then weird stuff starts happening. And it's just this guy. He walks with a limp. He's got a cane. And he's just very British. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, th those those kind of real fears affected real scientists for their entire lives. I went to um, uh, the 100th anniversary. Uh, yeah. Richard Feynman would have been 100 a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, a, a, an amazing, wow. an amazing American physicist, a theoretical physicist, an amazing science communicator. Uh, you know, most people think of, like, just Carl Sagan from around that time, but mm -hmm. Richard Feynman was really legitimately a genius. One of the guys who worked on uh, the Manhattan Project, one of the guys who helped make the atom bomb, and um, when Freeman Dyson of sci-fi, Dyson Spheres, mm -hmm. got up to talk about him, he said, you know, after after they were done making the bomb, he was never the same. Mm -hmm. he, he, he didn't see the reason too. in doing anything anymore. He's like, mm -hmm. what's the point? I mean, tomorrow mm -hmm. someone could just wipe us out like that. And, and and like like we were saying earlier, I mean, just ref the, these these sci-fi stories, and a lot of them tend towards dread and apocalypse, mm -hmm. and they Especially are like, a lot like, of them are reflecting those fears of when you when you have something that is so powerful that can just blink you out of existence. It's it it it, it lends itself to a lot of stories that are like that uh, and, and what scary stories. Require some urgency. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Like it, at any moment. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, and that's still that's still true. I just have but. to throw a plug in. This is not about the terrors of science, but if you have not read uh, What Do You Care What Other People Think and Surely You Must Be Joking, Mr. Feynman, mm -hmm. or whatever the title mm. is, Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman, yeah. uh, there are two collections of his writing about his life, and he was just a tremendously interesting human. Yeah. Uh, and and you, should, you must, like, read his account of... Uh, his his first wife yeah. and their own the the Feynman were... lectures as well I, I think were uh, uh, everyone in attendance there uh, all of his friends and his coworkers at Caltech said like the Feynman lectures if you're interested in, in some of the more sci of the Fi that kind of got imported into all these stories that we talk about uh, the Feynman lectures are I think the most widely distributed and uh, widely valued. Uh, um, primers on basic physics and quantum mechanics in existence. Yeah. Check them out. Uh, yeah. I, I would just say something to, to the previous point about why I think we don't see more hard science. Mm. It's because the actual science is not very sexy to watch. Sure. You know, because like it's, it's experimentation, it's there, monitor, it's, you know, I'll, it's math. I'll, I'll it's, also say though that there yeah. is a new, I, or at least if it's not new, it's certainly suddenly come into vogue very much. Uh, um, uh, a new, uh, I won't say new again, it's not new. Uh, the new popularity, the, the, the return to popularity of, of what uh, a friend of mine uh, refers to as uh, uh, competence pornography. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Of just, um, just the weird any, tingle one anywhere. gets watching someone be very good oh, at things. Is, is that the, the Martian? The Martian, the Martian yeah, yeah. was like the, Martian, was like the big return House, to competence porn. House, Sherlock, yeah. CSI. Oh, yeah. Com yeah. Competence yeah. porn. Yeah. The, there's a documentary, please someone in chat tell me the name of it, Documentary about the Higgs boson <coughs> particle and the people who found it. Oh, it um, is amazing. I forget. It is so exciting to see. This kind of dovetails too with what you're saying about like watching the actual science is not what's interesting. And with this documentary, it's the people who do the science yeah. that you're like, <gasps> and they're so oh excited, so and their, their entire so life particle is about this. Holy shit! It's the like effect, the, particle effect. the particle effect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It is, and it's competence born oh, because they're super smart people who are just so devoted. Some of them have spent decades yeah. working on this, and then they find it, and you're like, ah, they're rock yeah. stars. It's We're, so good. Working particle. in the most complicated machine we've yeah. ever built. And the stakes ever. are so high because one mistake, one. The one part of this, you know, miles long tube that comes down and it yeah. pushes everything back. One magnet like, out of line, yeah. hit a, oh and they God. clean it with a ping pong ball. <laughs> and for, to, 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 to celebrate it, they actually, I remember Torchwood did a radio play where they had like a mystery, the Torchwood oh, mystery that took place in the in the collider. Oh, oh yeah. As kind of a, as a big celebration. Oh, it turns out a squirrel bit one of the power cords and really died, so we have to shut it down for a no, month. No. Until, until, we can, until we can oh, cleanse my God. the ghost Speaking, speaking of, I don't know, 
that reminds me of, mm. of bu- where the term bug supposedly came from. Oh, the computer. sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And supposedly there was literally a bug in the, compu- in the computer. Cockro- and they had to log the bug. Cockroaches love PS4s. Yeah. Oh, God. Don't <laughs> talk no. to me about no. that. No. Hand, okay, so Don't I, even. I, 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 oh, I actually. The bug? What? It's a yeah. Grace Hopper story, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Look Ho- her up. I actually worked Grace Hopper at, story, I worked <laughs> at the tech bench at Best Buy in the days before Geek Squad, and like <laughs> that happens. Like people bring in their TV and stuff, uh, yeah, and it wouldn't work, and you take well, the case off, a, and it was apparently a common full problem. Of bugs, yeah. uh, I'm so sorry, yeah. everybody. But <laughs> with, 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 with that, with that terrifying, <laughs> actually, I, I wanted to throw to Amy. What, 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 what your comment, and then also, what's your favorite? What's your favorite sci-fi? Okay, I want to tell this. My favorite science discovery story while I stall for time to figure out how I'm going to answer this question. Um, and, and this is only tangent, but it just, that reminded me, this was, this is the version of this that I remember in junior high, so please annotate it with for accuracy. But when they were explaining uh, what cosmologists do, they told us this story about some astronomers who were working at a radio telescope, and then one day they essentially, one day, like, they realized they just in the process of, like, point it here, scan, point it here, find out what you see. They were like, oh my god. Everywhere we point this thing, we're getting the same frequency back. Uh, and it was like, oh, the telescope is broken. Yeah. Great. These things are expensive. They are very hard to take care of. The telescope is broken. And they went out and they looked. And sure enough, uh, like it wasn't broken, but they did find that some birds had made a nest in it. <gasps> so they were like, oh, everywhere we point it, we get the same thing because there's literally like bird poop in the yeah. telescope. So they clean it out and they go back to work and they start pointing it in directions and getting things but in a much fancier organized fashion because they're scientists. And they're like, oh my God, we're still getting it. We're still getting the same thing everywhere we look. And they were getting really frustrated. Uh, and so one of them is sitting around, these are the practical physicists. One of them is sitting around talking to the theoretical physicists um, and they start describing like, I, you know, the telescope's broken. We're getting uh, this is an exaggeration. Uh, the telescope's broken. We're getting the same thing everywhere. And the theoretical physicist is like, "Are you kidding? Are are you serious? That's the thing we've been predicting. Like, it was the discovery of the universal background radiation." Some um, people in chat are 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 uh, calling they're, they're calling it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Cosmi- <laughs> cosmic microwave background radiation. It's, it's the way that that story was told. That, that like the people were like, this is a thing we had predicted might possibly exist, but we had no idea yeah. whether it was real. And that was, was another one that was like four. I think forty years. One of the the scientists <laughs> who was working on this or had, uh, researchers. Had had his theory for like forty years, and then these other. What did I? I saw a documentary about this. I think I feel like I saw a video. Maybe not a full documentary. Please send it to me because right, I, I need to, to find like, it. Yeah. The telling of that. No, no, you got it. Man. You got it. Right. Yeah. 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 Serve the narrative. Yeah. Wasn't that yeah. 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 story? Sometimes you got to balance the scientific fact and narrative. Some version of that actually happened, and we understood a new thing about the universe. So dope. I just I was I was listening to a podcast lately, and they were. Saying that's one problem that we've got even now is as advanced as so much so many things are, people become more and more specialized. There's not mm-hmm. often a lot of overlap where it's like the biologists might know something oh, sure. that would oh, yeah, like yeah, critically yeah. help the physicists. There, there was, but you know, I, they don't know because there's no like anybody that, monitoring. My, 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 my yeah. intro to interesting <laughs> thinking uh, was Robert Anton Wilson, and I, I would say he's one of my favorite science fiction authors, except I don't necessarily know if the books he writes are science fiction. Not They're so him. weird. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But he 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 would they were trying to, he's like, we're pretty sure that the last person who actually knew everything there was to know about mathematics died in the 30s because there's just too much for any human being to know anymore. Which, there, there's not one person uh, who knows everything. Which maybe brings us to talking about the singularity. Wait, time out. Pause, <laughs> pause, pause, pause. Time, time, time. Internet sensation Amy Dolan still hadn't said yep, yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's come so back to it. Let's, we'll wrap back around. Go ahead. <coughs> That's what I do. do there was. That's what I do. Uh, I <laughs> I grew up on Star Trek. Uh, some of the books that that really really blew my mind as a kid are ones that I can't revisit with the same feelings. I was a, a huge Orson Scott Card fan uh, in like Fair. ninth tenth right. grade. Yeah. Um, and now I'm excited about other visions of uh, the future. Uh, but the like. Last year. And and I love the sort of the like social commentary style of, of science fiction, like Brave New World is legit a classic for a reason. Oh my god, yeah. Um, it says really interesting things and it asks really interesting questions. <laughs> and um, it also kind of happened. <laughs> Brave New World in 1984 is the twin poles of like future, like predicted elements of science fiction are really cool. But uh, 
having said all of that, even though I only read it three months ago, uh, Left Hand of Darkness has wow. to radically rocked my, my world. Uh, Ursula Le Guin. Tell me uh, about it. Uh, it is, it imagines an alien visitor uh, to an, a different alien planet. Uh, and you get the history of their universe, which is maybe our universe, uh, in the future, through two folks struggling to understand each other. Someone trying to understand a world, uh, all of which is alien to us. Hmm. It has some, what for the time were, very radical notions about gender, because gender works differently on the planet that's being visited than it does for Genli Ai, our observer. And he struggles with it. Uh, and over the course of the book, uh, the because they essentially they have like a more or less monogendered species that divides uh, at at times of reproduction into poles and then comes back together, um, but might divide differently the next time. Um, and it, but it's it is a a cultural tour and it is an incredible narrative. You can read it just for its poetic qualities. You can read it just for its ideas about gender. You can read it just for its ideas about space travel. You can read it just to find out what the organization that sent him is about. Uh, I, I hope I'm not spoiling too much of the book because it's <laughs> like start to finish. It's, it's an absolute revelation and it, it unites the qualities of like the science and the fiction part because it, it's worth it just for the story it's telling, but it will also change your brain and make you consider things you haven't considered before. Uh, and, and like thoroughly, deeply empathetic. Uh, uh, just on every level, like it, so it plays out in what to us is a recognizably human struggle where people are trying to understand each other and people are struggling for power and he sort of lands in a couple of different societies on this planet and then you get to compare and contrast them uh, while they tell a rollicking adventure story of him on this weird winter planet. Uh, there, it does a lot of things, uh, mm -hmm. but it does them really, really, really well. And interestingly, I wish I had brought it. Ursula Guin wrote an introduction to it uh, where she essentially said, she was sort of bored with the idea that like science fiction could was just predictive because it's like well if you take anything and extrapolate it out to the nth degree she makes this off-headed reference the result is usually cancer um, and it's like that's accurate oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like if you just hype something uh, and she would sort of that said, escalated quickly hey, well, yeah like, uh, <laughs> the 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 sort of like yes anything goes wrong if you this but too much um, and I don't I'm not bagging on that style of fiction because I love it very very much. But this specific imagined world that she made does all of the things I love about this and all of the things I love about regular books and has very reasonable, interesting internal things where you'll, you'll get be like, but with no beasts of burden, how did they develop blah, blah, blah. And it, anyway, it's, it's just a fantastic <laughs> book that uh, I'm going to go with as my pick. Let's wow. 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 That was great. I really want to pick that up now. Yeah. Yeah. Thank it's, you it's so much. It's as if you talk about books for like your, 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 your daily reality. You moved a lot of units yeah. of the left hand of the argument. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. I have been, I have been meaning to read it for so long. And then unfortunately she passed away this year. And, yeah. and yeah. Um, if you haven't read her short story, The Ones Who Walk Away from Orga Rain, that's a great way to get hooked mm. on Ursula Gwynn. It's three pages long and it will uh, change your life. Uh, but yeah, Left Hand of Darkness. Nice. Wow, thank you so much for sharing that with wow. us. I love hearing the passion with which you talked about that. Yeah. Uh, What's the right hand? <laughs> got to save you something for the sequel. Really all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, that's the last page. Um, yeah. Did you, Aliza, did you share with us your favorite? Mm -hmm. I didn't. Um, my favorite piece of science fiction is 1984. Yeah. Oh. And mm. I don't know how old I was when I first read it, but I've reread that book more than any other book in my life. And I've revisited it, I come back to it all the time because it, it does have that predictive nature, but it's also like the socio-political predictive mm -hmm. and the idea of how humans watch each other and monitor each other through, um, both through uh, like technology and also through like social conditioning and um, it's a paranoid, uh, dystopian sci-fi, and I love it. <laughs> and not um, getting less scary. As true. Nope. Goes. Right. So, and nope. I think not that's why I love it still. Like, every time I revisit it, it's just, it reveals new truths about what we are actually living th through and what, what we're looking towards, so sadly, scarily. Um, yeah, yeah. 1984 is just so, uh, yeah, it, it's like foundational for me. I mean, it, it 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 should be foundational for everybody. That's that's one of those, I think, yeah, those I think books it is you should for a lot of, read. A lot of Americans and a lot of 
you know, English speakers. So because I completely and agree that, with yeah, you that mm -hmm. 1984 and Brave New World are kind of the left and right mm -hmm. brackets. Mm -hmm. Well, because they're often talked about in terms of are you more afraid of a future ruled by fear or a future ruled by like the carrot or the stick? Like mm -hmm. where it's sort of like are you going to numb the populace with things they think they want, right. like Soma, um, or are you going to control them by authoritatively coming authoritarianly coming down on them in various ways? And that's an oversimplification, but sure. it's like mm -hmm. an interesting. Sure. It's, yes. it's although and you guys, mm. what are your favorite things? Mm -hmm. I mean I, if if I had to choose at the moment I and I've and I've bounced around a lot because because I, I was I, I was fortunate enough to grow up in the age of, of anime, which meant that I also got a lot of Asian film and I got a lot of Japanese science fiction and um, also weirdly enough like a, a, a couple of South American science fiction pieces that get, that I came in. I was I was thinking about growing up with with uh, stories like the like the original Gundam story, which was really spectacular. I, I I was I was mushing the whole thing together and trying to figure it out. And like and I know it's it's been briefly brought up, but but I was trying to think of something not too dark and but but still all over the place. Farscape, weirdly enough, is I know we mm -hmm. we briefly mm -hmm. talked about it. I th I think Farscape is is at least the thing I go to is 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 comfortable science fiction for me i was trying to I, I, I interesting i was trying to think of something like there's plenty of challenging science fiction and i i absorb an enormous amount of media that is designed to make me um what what is the, this is um unhappy but but what, what's that great doctor who uh, unhappiness is happy is happy for for deep people which in my in my in my sad <laughs> moments i agree with in my sad moments i'm like unhappiness is happiness for deep people but <laughs> Oh, uh, God. Yeah. On the other hand, I occasionally oh, and like I, I will I, I like I watched those first that first episode of of Black Mirror when it hit hit the the world many years ago with like my God they're making something for me this is terrible on every level and it's yeah. making me I hate everything in the world and <laughs> I'm crying and kind of throwing up but, a little okay, bit a yay little side fun side note about <laughs> Black Mirror this season is amazing um, I I really kind of appreciate that it, there was it was. Both the San Junipero Thank God, episode we that. that no 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 where they were like uh, they saw people's reaction to it and they're like oh people don't always want to feel like they yeah. want to it die is, it is at the end it's okay, and they, to, have okay, it's okay to be happy that's right. cool oh, um, and so it was a combination of that and the fact that it, Black Mirror is a, is set in a near future uh, technological dystopia mm -hmm. and people are like. And the showrunners, I'm sure, realize, oh, these people are living in a near future technological oh, they, dystopia. They, 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 they've, they've had enough. They've, they they've need something happy. Mm -hmm. Did they, they actually? No, they, say actually that? they actually came out and says we apologize for the current episode everybody's yeah, living through. The SS. <laughs> really it, see, yeah. I swear but, to God, it's yeah. like the showrunners wrote the future. But the SS McAllister yeah. episode is so good. Yeah. It is such an incredible look at to uh, toxic fandom and uh, just the things that we love and inclusion and it's oh, it's so it's, great. A, it's a great it's, it's so a great show good. and it's an important show but i was trying to think of something that actually just makes me feel good yeah that's a good that's a good <laughs> and point farscape man uh farscape is such a is such a i mean it, it is all all the fun dumb that i love about science fiction it's mm. it's I, I love i love that that the notion of taking an astronaut and making him the dumbest person in the room yeah. And watching an astronaut be the dumbest person in the room is just really somebody who who is used to being deeply competent at everything. Somebody who's just a great athlete, a, a, a linguist, a scientist, um, just can do every a, a, a test pilot. He's not even just an astronaut. He's he's a test pilot. Yeah. He drives experimental he spaceships because yeah. why not? And watching that five season arc of him going from the the, the most useless creature in in the universe. To just an unparalleled badass in a way that is uniquely human in that universe is is really ple and also I really enjoy watching smart people smart people have intense nervous breakdowns and there's like three or four oh. intense nervous breakdowns. There's I mean like like have you have you seen Farscape? I have not. I it. I'm about to it's it's right. amazing. Like once he starts to figure out that his power is that is, is that is that the one where they, there's like a very good butt in a space suit. Uh, yes, yeah, a, a lot, okay. a lot of that's all I know. There's, it was the crew is Muppets. It was the first. Like, it was it was the okay. first big post Henson Henson push. The Henson Company did all of the alien work, and it's beautiful. Are there any humans in it, or is it all one? Uh, one human, he, and he's the one with the butt. Uh, kind of his, some of the his, other ones. Some of the other ones very solid. Human, I I think. Yeah. Right. There's a butt. Okay. There's a lot of butts, actually. To be fair. He does have a nice butt in his face. And and they and they have a lot. No, no. Don't look at 
me like that. Butts are important. Butts are very important. <laughs> butts are important. <laughs> butts are important. No one's, no one's denying. <laughs> butts are important. No one's denying. No, it's because my, my friend, This episode Lauren. brought to you by Dick Grayson. Uh, Dick Grayson, okay. everybody. The official butt of the oh, DC Universe. Oh, Nightwing butt is such so. good. Butt is the best butt in DC. <laughs> Rank them, rank them, quick. But there's, there's... Uh, Dick Grayson, Selena Kyle, um... Everyone else. Everyone else. Good enough, good enough. Pretty much. Yeah, that's a... Um, yeah, I, I think... Well, it's, anyway. it's, he, he, he basically accidentally, he, he builds a machine that no one, he basically builds a wormhole, and we were talking about the wormhole machines. It's fine, it's fine. It's fine, yeah. yeah. And he, he figures out how to teleport instantaneously, and... <laughs> Ends up in a part of space that he's never been to. He doesn't really know how that it happened or what happened or, or what's going he's on. He's lost in space. He's lost in space. Mm -hmm. He ends up on Choose a prison the ship. The <laughs> it's, it's a prison ship that has been taken over by the prisoners who have killed all the guards and are now escaping this like evil, like like the big like the imperial the, the imperial empire. empire. And the Imperials look like him. They're the, the, those are the humanoids of the Imperials, although they're not warm blood. They're little. They're like they've got a different kind of vibe. So his only, the only thing he's really good for, because he doesn't know how any of the tech works, he doesn't know any of the history, he doesn't know anything, and all of his tech is bullshit, is that he looks like one of the bad guys, and so they can just shove him in front of people and he can bullshit. And that is his only power for about two episodes until he finally has a complete nervous breakdown, befriends one of the cleaning robots that's literally, like, it's a Roomba, and he decorates it and teaches it to sing uh, the, uh, the 1812 Overture. Oh my God. And he names it 1812. And it, he just kind of, it, they, they eventually go into a lot of Alice in Wonderland through the Looking Glass metaphors oh, for course, him. Oh, of course, yeah. You, and he just like starts that, yeah. getting weirder and weirder. They have a beach party episode, because why the fuck not? <laughs> uh, it's, it's, wow. it's good stuff. I need to make time for Fresh Cake. You do. I mean, yeah. I, I, the internet He's... informed me in advance that I'm going to love Aaron's son when I get to Oh, the man. Room. Aaron's oh, going to mess you up. Be prepared. It starts rough. Like, it's, it's a the little The first old. season's a little yeah. rough. Okay. It's, 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 you're, you're, like, when you ease into it, you're like, this Sc is the show everyone's talking and about? Then like, yeah. and, and then Scorpius happens. And then the minute Scorpius happens, happens, you're like, oh. Agreed. You're like, oh, okay. Oh, right. Um, the fuck and the effects improve also. I can throw a suggestion. Most the folks will already be aware, but... Uh, just relevant to this discussion, something that's just as aware of the absurdity of life as some of these, but will leave you feeling good, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. No! Oh! Sorry. Jeez. <laughs> so sorry. Are you switching what your Jeez. favorite is now? I, I, I need a towel. <laughs> <laughs> She's taking oh, the magic castle. Yeah. It's amazing. Oh my god! Right. Like, if you think I'm crazy about science, you should see me when I get crazy about magic. Yeah, you just take a coin and go. Oh. I can't explain ah! it. Yeah. <laughs> Last time I went, they made me change pants. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, you can't just we're wear we're any pants. <laughs> you gotta have so fancy pants. It is a fancy pants place. Yeah. 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 Um, fancy okay, right so now. I have a whole list. Um, Cowboy Bebop is Woo! just so, like, it has informed so much of how I live my life, what I'm choosing to do with my life, true. how I dress, yeah. the, the, the oh. music and the animation and the characters and everything is so incredible about that. Uh, and then uh, also in anime, I guess Trigon is also, was also really important around that same time for me. Uh, that's a science that's fiction, That's yeah. science fiction. Yeah. That's, that's essentially Dune. Oh, yeah. Dune as well, sort of, mm. which is also very soft, sort of fantasy-esque. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, I really love Vonnegut and Ray Bradbury. Yes, um, Bradbury. Both they're, I feel that they're similar in s some ways in that their sci-fi is, is not hard. It's it's Emotional. deals more with human nature. Yes, it, it deals. I mean, I guess all science fiction is human nature, but the language of their books also really spoke to me in such a huge way as I was going through all of them. Sirens of mm -hmm. Titan and uh, Slaughterhouse Five and Fahrenheit 451. I'm so excited. It was yeah. so funny. I was telling my mom, I was like, do you know what I'm really excited about? Just out of nowhere. And she's like, oh, the new Fahrenheit 451 <laughs> with uh, Michael yeah. B. Jordan. And I was like, oh, yes, you know me so well. Mm -hmm. So I'm so excited for that. We'll, let's all watch it when it comes out. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, it's all right. out. It's out. It's out. Oh! Watch it now. Right now? Get out of here. Go! go. Really Take cool. your golden ticket and go! <laughs> 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 go! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, it came out. Yeah, you watched it? Who, oh, 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 oh. 
Uh, Miss no Neil, thank you for reminding me about Legend of the Galactic Heroes. My God. Yeah, My God, Legend of the um, Galactic uh, Heroes. I, I watched a lot of Red Dwarf. It's Red super Dwarf duper mentions. fun. Yeah. Can I just say, especially if you listen to all this and sitting here and tumble this all in my mind, uh, for the first time ever, 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 I'm switching. I'm switching my vote. It's not Star Wars anymore. It's Doctor Who. Mm. Doctor Who has passed Star about, Wars in my heart. I was waiting. I was Who. waiting for it, someone it, to, to. We haven't talked about much time travel in general. It's, so much time travel. Well, you know, the problem is. Oh, it's well, re- yeah. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. no. You were. You were saying. No, you, I, I, no, I, I, no, you first. Doctor Who. Doctor Who. Well, it's really hard to tell a good time travel story without it turning into Bill and Ted. That's the problem. If you haven't seen Primer, to have you all fair, seen that Primer? Was an excellent adventure. It was, ah, as well as a bogus journey. Uh, Primer is a movie that is on Netflix. They literally made it for a thousand dollars, and it absolutely looks like they made it for a thousand dollars. And same thing. The first ten or fifteen minutes, you're like, "What am I watching?" Because they're not actors, and they're just in a dude's kitchen, kind of talking. But it, the way this is, is a time travel. I'm gonna come back to Doctor Who, but the. Basically, they have a machine that will let them go back, I think, three days. Like, you know, correct me, Chad. But they're very aware of the fact that, all right, we're going to go back in time three days. So we have to remember where we were so we don't run into ourselves. And like, But it's like, it continues to compound, it's basically. It's very complicated. Yeah, it's like, people have like put together spreadsheets and stuff. And it very much becomes like, okay, wait, so Thursday, you got a flat tire. And then we went back to make sure that you weren't late for work. But then you've got to be gone before the real you arrives. And it just... It spans out of control, but it's really good primer. Um, but the, time but, travel. We'll check it out. Time yeah. travel. But, uh, but Doctor Who, it's on Netflix. Uh, Doctor Who, I think, for me, the high water mark, and Liz turns around like, go on. Because mm-hmm. she's, 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 you're right on time, though. I was about to say you were a late adopter, but you're right on time. I, I just jumped in in the 11th Doctor myself. Uh, it was something that Moffat said around the time of the 50th that I think was really correct, that he was talking about why the Doctor is such a significant character. But it's like, they could have created anything, and they created someone who was there to help. He's a doctor. He's there to, they, they, they didn't give him a weapon, they gave him a tool to fix things. They gave him two hearts to care, you know? Yeah, I, and that was my reaction. Like, he just problem solves his way through the universe. The doctor. Really he tries turning yeah. off and on again. Yeah, he really does, you know, to, great, to greater or lesser Roy. success. Yeah. I love. I'm, I've been going through the <laughs> IT crowd again with Zach. Oh, fourth like, Doctor solid. Oh my god. She died <laughs> at a sea park with all the water. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Closed door is a happy door. I, lo- I remember you doing. Moss, if you ever, if you ever want to, really if, if you ever, by the way, want want a want a want a window into a into a dark alternate reality, you should see the American pilot for the IT crowd. Oh, we oh, yeah. watched it, it's and we not, decided that okay. we're gonna do it better. It's not okay. Uh, but also, uh, yes, yeah, speaking of time travel, H.G. Uh, uh, Wells and uh, and Jules Verne. Mm. I'm also a huge, huge fan of. I went through a huge steampunk phase. Yeah. You can find those pictures uh, if you Google them. I'm sure. Um, and yeah, I, I love early sci-fi and, and how interesting it was. Like, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. What is... if you could go underwater? But it's like, it was an electric thing. No, 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 I know. I'm, 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 thing. And yeah, yeah, I'm being and glib about it. But yeah. that's, that's the thing, is they but couldn't do that. Yeah, no, I know, I know. I know. So that's so bad. It's like going into space. We couldn't, we couldn't do that yeah. to MTV, the 1860s. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's as impressive as environment. And this the, this kind of stuff, all, like it always gets my brain taken, right? Like, why don't why why is it never mentioned that it's space time travel? In in, in which I mean, yeah, yeah. If, the Earth if, is yeah. If right. if I just went back a couple of days or a couple of years, the Earth may not be yeah. in the same position, oh, yeah. Yeah. and I might yeah. just be, be in, in space. space. And yeah. and why I, I guess coming coming all the way back to my earlier point is like why I like hard sci-fi is when when people get those little details right. It's it's as though they're acknowledging my intelligence without talking down to me or trying to simplify something. Mm-hmm. It's like, ooh, wow, that yeah, that is how it would happen. That's so cool. Well, how, how, how do you, how do you feel know, about Black Mirror then? How do you feel about Black Mirror? Uh, is rooted in like yeah. possibility as the show they, is. They, they, tr- they try not to. I, I go there too it's like far very out on near. Them. No, I, I think I think I, I think it has its place. I mean, right. I, I think things that speak to you in such a way do need that kind of grounding yeah. and and I, I guess uh, that's those are just more so the stories that that speak to me but uh, uh, yeah I mean I, I love a good narrative every, every now and then but those little those little details are really yeah. going. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know I why. Think that's why like of all sci-fi time travel is is I think my my favorite like subsets of sci-fi broadly are like dystopia and time travel 
because dystopia I've already hmm. kind of talked about that with 1984 but with time travel it's those details that's like it the whole thing can just completely fall apart you know someone so really easily. thought about it yeah exactly yeah. or like, did or did well, yeah. but even the ones that yeah. are yeah even the ones that are really well thought out and well done just it, it's like so, it's so yeah. easily it's like nope that doesn't do, work do Oops, we have do we have a feeling about time after time then which is kind of the ultimate uh, the ultimate like in, internally uh, uh, overcooked sci-fi time travel narrative I have no I idea what that, that is time what is after that? time is am I really the only person here who's seen time after no. time no mm -hmm. I mean yes yeah, I mean yes, yes. Like, what the opposite wow uh, <laughs> time after time was an 80s film where where uh H.G. Wells discovers that one of his best friends is Jack the Ripper, who then steals his time machine and goes into the like eighties into the future. And H.G. Wells has to go after him. Wait, wait. It's a movie, See, and H.G. Wells has to has to like show. stop Jack the Ripper from there was a from TV like. Show last year that was exactly what you just described. We may have turned it into a, wow. but like. But it didn't. It didn't. Uh, it didn't yeah. go because they were like, oh, we're turning Jack the Ripper loose in two thousand seventeen. No thanks. Oops. <laughs> oh. Yeah, someone just said also a TV show. Yeah. It was huh. terrible. It, and it sounded it's terrible. Was it was that like, oh, I don't know what to go. Ghost of H.G. Wells. I renounce all of my science. 1979, time after time. Malcolm McDowell as H.G. Wells. Oh, I and, love uh, Malcolm Dave, McDowell. David Warner as, as Jack the Ripper. So they did mm. remake oh. Old J. a TV show. Old J. Ripper. Does... <laughs> I know him personally. Yeah, yeah. Rock works for me. I mean, I You're not a British prostitute. You're probably going to be fine. Yeah. I love well, Clockwork Orange. Well, it's so. Well, well. I mean, B Day. What? Hey, we're. He's so it's he's... okay for him to just kill British prostitutes? No. I mean, he's no. Not, he doesn't fit the the profile. That's all I'm saying. He's oh, that's right. See the whole. No, yes. Sorry, I it's... thought you were generally saying that. No, oh no, there's a whole. It's a whole. It's, like, it's, it's it's a good little movie. Yeah, it's a good little movie. I'm curious to see yeah. how it holds up, but it but for '79, it's a it's a romp. Okay. Clockwork Orange. Clockwork Orange is definitely science fiction. Clockwork Orange is okay. Good. Yeah. That I really. Oh, we're helpful. I loved. Oh, talking about science fiction terms and language. I love when they play with language in science fiction. So they created NADSAT, which is the dialect for Clockwork Orange that the book is written in, and that they talk in the movies. And they, the idea of this was that it's set in this future where it's yeah, uh, there's yeah. Russian like uh, I think Russia has taken over or yeah. there's like we have a relationship with Russia and so it's got all this uh, it's a, a Russian English pigeon yeah and, and, and two things so that, that get that really really right the, the chat has been mentioning this since we started uh, Firefly needs yeah. a mention yeah. for that of course oh, yeah. no um, they don't okay oh. well, well I mean I for, have a for, for, att for attempting to do the same kind of pastiche of language, yeah. like you were saying, a, sh a show that does it better, again, is the Expanse. Yeah. But, uh, yes. Yes. but yeah, like sure. like uh, imagining what if what if uh, humans from Earth from all corners of the Earth started colonizing the same places at once. Right. Unlike how Earth, you know, how we evolved on Earth, we all went from all of our different countries to the same place at once. So you know, uh, Belters will say you know things like Oye. Like for hello, uh -huh. but then they'll have That's these great. these other you know coming from Spanish, but they'll have all these other slang and terms, and they'll even have hand gestures that evolve from the fact that they when they first got to the belt they couldn't speak each other's uh -huh. language, and they had communication problems with their helmets that were faulty, uh -huh. so they came up with all of these hand gestures that meant certain things when they just a worldwide pigeon. Uh, it's so I love that. Yeah, so, uh, so I and I love I love and yeah, people love keep it. on keep on bringing up Firefly. I love Firefly because I. I love space and I love westerns and I love all the writing and all the characters and stuff, but there are not a lot of Chinese people in it Isn't for it a thing something. where it's like supposed to be like a and half Chinese. That they, speak a, they speak a lot of Chinese tonight. They speak a lot of Chinese for not having no Chinese people yeah. in it. It's I mean, just saying. Uh, it's yeah. We know. Uh, I think I went, I went on the rant about that there are no Asians in the future. Uh, at, for cyberpunk, right? Yeah. Also, I think you did it at the bar a few months ago because we were oh, very drunk. I do recall. I recall a lot of pounding of the. I feel like Middle Easterners have it worse though. Like in terms Probably of like who's not, not there in the yeah. future. It's, it's true. It's, just, like, it's true. In general, but it's the yeah. weirdest because like so much of like there's always like Asian signs everywhere. But where are the Asian people? That, you're totally right. It, it sticks yeah. out like a sore thumb. I so I'm um, I only watched Firefly all the way through. I think. Maybe five months ago. The first oh time. wow! What did you think? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. And, and no, I, I only saw it like. like no, I only saw it like three years 
go as well mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. So, and that was the thing I noticed. That was like the major prevalent thing that I was like, wait, what? Yeah. what? This well, they no had this sense. really cool idea and then they couldn't fill out the I, world. I, I feel the same way about, about Buckaroo Banzai across the eight dimensions. Like, oh, the only thing missing from, from, from that concept is, is just some Asian actors <laughs> in a Buckaroo Banzai it's movie. Yeah, man. I mean, but... The problem that I had with Firefly, and this was no, by no means a problem with Firefly, is I saw Serenity first. Because yeah. I didn't know they were anywhere related. Sure. Serenity came out and it was a movie, and I was like, oh, I this is a cool. I know a lot of people yeah. had that problem. Mm -hmm. and that, uh, that, that, that movie actually started my career. What? 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 I, uh, I, um, I, so I, after, right out of college, I was transitioning into uh, a graduate program, and while I was doing that, I started, I wanted, I was like, maybe I could be a science writer, so I started doing science writing, I started uh, pitching articles to, like, uh, the Wireds and the Popular Science and whatever. So I started, and, and I, I had just seen Firefly all the way through. Like you did, and my uh, my girlfriend at the time was like, I envy your experience, yeah. like seeing it for the first time. Yeah. And then I watched Serenity, and I was obviously broken up by how it ends um, for some characters. It's spoilers, whatever. It, yeah. no, no, spoiler no, no, alert, no, no, no. but you can no, say, yeah, no, I know, I know, but you know. I wrote, no. you know how Dude, they are. I wrote a sketch about this. But when, um, so when uh, Wash dies by being speared by uh, <laughs> a, big, a big spear. It's been 20 years. Yeah, it's sorry. He, he, gets, he gets speared right through the cockpit window uh -huh. of a spaceship. And so I wanted to, I pitched an article and I wrote it. And, um, and it was, would the, a spear of that mass and that, and that velocity that I could estimate from what I was seeing in the movie pierce a windshield of a spacecraft with similar wind sh uh, sh shield strength uh, for windows in something like the ISS. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, it could, uh, only because it's so big and it's moving so quickly. Um, so I kind of positioned it as like this tragic fanboy trying to save a character but not being able to even with science kind of thing. Yeah. And, uh, and I wrote it, and then uh, Nathan Fillion tweeted the link out and Bless said, this is my favorite uh, fanboy rant ever, period, and shared the link. And I was like, oh, I won. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and then I, I did not know this. And, and then after that, I started, uh, oh, wow, it actually comes full circle now that I think about it. Uh, so after that, I started doing ex pretty much exclusively science and sci-fi mm -hmm. and pop culture and analyzing pop culture, kind of trying to make it my niche. From then, I started uh, doing things on Twitter and, sh and sharing uh, my articles on Twitter. I, uh, I, I started doing a TV gig for Al Jazeera for, uh, for a TV show that they were doing at the time. Then I moved out here to do more of that, but then they folded. But then I went to Nathan Fillion's birthday party what? not Man. long after What's that, and, and elevator pitched Chris Hardwick, who was at the party, right. I told him, hey, I think I can explain how the Walking Dead virus works, weird. and now I'm here. Weird, yeah. weird, wait, weird question. Yeah. yeah. That is a great story. <laughs> yeah. Was that was, with... was, 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 yeah. was Chloe Dykstra in the Doctor Who bunny outfit at that party? What? Were you guys at the same party? That's what I'm uh, saying. That's then that's I it. might have actually also been at that black, party. Black, red, white ears. I, yeah. Hey. Hey! hey. hey. Sax was also at that party. Yeah, that, oh, that, shit. Was, that yeah. was like the chaotic oh. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were all. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa! Oh. Right, so, so don't I, I actually, I, don't, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I only knew his, I knew his girlfriend at the time, so she was kind of up to him. Because she was a science commentator yeah. for our show at the time. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. it all came together in full goodness. circle. He kind, he kind of started and then continued my science communication. Oh. Holy oh, fucking shit! Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god! Holy fucking shit! Yeah, very That's serendipitous. So my, my Serendip. Uh, Serendipitous. Oh, she's alive! Star Wars, Absolutely. Attack of the Clones is the greatest sci-fi movie ever made. Get out. I That's don't mind fine. it. I don't mind it. Yeah, I'm zone not, of safety. I'm you're allowed to love. You're allowed to love what you love. No, yeah. no, no you're yeah. sleeping on the Tox Machina set now. Oh, yeah. no. Now, that, <laughs> with the big bear. No. now that it's just memes, I like the prequels. I'm now. actually super excited to talk to you about Firefly. I, seriously? Because, like, I really want to know. I, I do feel like it would play very differently today. I was mm -hmm. one of those people, like... I was a hardcore Buffy fan, and I got, when the DVDs came out, I got them as a present for Christmas, and I was like, Please, oh, it's that other that. show. <laughs> and then I sat down with it, and I became like, like, this is, I can admit this because it's in the past, uh, just an evangelist. Just sure, like, we all oh, have heard no. the good word of God. That was me. No, for like it's, a we all it's we all so are. great. I think I saw the pilot like 27 times because I just kept getting wow. friends and being like, You're, I can't explain it, just watch it. Wow. Out of that, I was going to watch Farscape. 
because yeah. it is oh. so mm -hmm. good. That's how we, we, we had a, we had a yeah. the good word of Farscape. Oh, we just talked about good. John Cryer. That's what to just yeah. we did a whole John Farscape Cry. thing. Wait, wait. Everyone, everyone listen to Amy. 1812 is my baby. Everyone listen to Amy for a second. That is me with Battlestar Galactica. Listen to Amy for a second. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Amy, no, no, no. I just am curious because it shows off the some of those best qualities of sci-fi and because it really does show off those weaknesses of like mm -hmm. at the time for a lot of folks watching the idea of like oh it occurred to us that a non-english language might survive into the future mm -hmm. and it was like that's well, amazing it's and real. it was like and there were people at the time already saying this but for other viewers and I was one of them it took a while to be like wait a minute mm -hmm. your casting and your production design and everything needs to reflect those conceits but right. it is one of those in that sense that like science and science fiction and imagining your world in a complete and consistent way can is its own reward and a thing you can just keep working towards. And every mm -hmm. time you have some cool new idea, like think it through. Okay, that's the end. I, I, yeah. I have I have a dream yeah. of rebooting. Uh, this is this is I'm 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 placing this out. I want to do a modern reboot of, of Buck Rubanzai. And the world crime lead, you're trying, you're trying and I want Erica to play Buck Rubin. <laughs> that yes. is literally all I fucking want. That's literally all I fucking want. I can't wait to watch. I know. Is I want you in a suit. I can't. With a guitar. Talk without coughing. Yeah. So I'm gonna peace out. Oh. 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 Thank you, Rachel. Somewhere else. Bye. But Bye. We, we did I say hope you good live. things about Farscape. We, yes. we, we did preach the, yeah. the, the yes, gospel. Yes, talk about Farscape, talk about, about Lex, talk about Ergo oh, Someone mentioned Lex. Talk about Akira. We had oh Akira. my god, Akira! Here's all the uh, ammunition. Talk about right. motherfucking Galaxy Quest. I mean, also Galaxy Quest, but like... We Galaxy Quest. Quest. Or no, we didn't. It's we didn't a rock talk Ergo Proxy. Ergo Proxy. Oh, yeah. We talked, you know, I, you know I worked on Ergo Proxy. I do. I no. never I got to finish that. all of hey, that, but I was like, oh my god, this is my jam. Have you, you guys like, talked about... Like, Potemkin references, and it talks about, you know, free will and AI and everything. Wait, but... Talos has got some great stories about 2010. <laughs> have you talked about your stories oh, of 2010? I have not on, talked man. about 2010. Do you, a lot of y'all may not know this, but Talos and Jaffe was in Space Odyssey 2010. I was. You're talking really? You were Roy Scheider's son. I was Roy Scheider's son in 2010. Oh, oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Yeah. It was the first movie I saw you. I didn't know it was you until I saw the I credits. Learned, I, learned to, I learned to ride my bicycle through Howl. I was like, I actually biked through, <laughs> through Howl. I was like, I would just run through that fucking space station. I would just be running around that space station all day on my bicycle. Just like, they let me play around with a little big circle exercise wow. equipment. And you get to oh, swim man. with dolphins, right? I got to swim with dolphins. I just got to swim with dolphins yeah. a lot. So just get him to start talking about all his toys oh, no. and the toys. Yeah. Oh, the toys. Okay. All right, okay. I gotta leave. I There's too many Bye. great stories. Yeah. Right. So are you to leaving too? Yeah, I'm gonna, 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 gonna get this one home. Yeah, she needs to not yeah. die. All right. All right. I'll catch y'all later. Bye. Yes, Bye. I was. Yeah. Bye. These are great stories. Uh, I, I did. I got to play Roy Scheider's son in 2000, and it was the best job I've ever had because I literally just, they sent me, there was Marine Land existed at the time. It doesn't exist anymore. It's sadly what gone. What is Marine Land? Marine Land was basically... <laughs> Uh, Sorry, the low, way Erica said low budget Sea World. Uh, it was it was a it was a it was a like Sea World except like more uh, like a carny Sea World. They were there like, was like a it was a little less of like of like look at the amazing science. It was more like here's a pool where you can swim with sharks and it's probably safe. <laughs> like, ah. That sounds so great. It was great. Um, and so they would every day I would go down and they taught me how to because they the shots that they wanted they couldn't have a trainer on screen. So they taught, I had to spend months getting the dolphins to like learn to obey my whims. Oh my oh! god! Oh! Oh my god, oh! tell us oh! Oh god. This is like the Rosetta Stone of your entire life. Oh man. Like everything like, <laughs> it all like, makes no sense job. It all makes sense. Even, yeah, even the right. no job was, has been as good as this one. Uh, yeah, and, and so, and then eventually like, this was back at the old MGM lot, which was now the Sony lot, Sony lot. Uh, and they have this giant tank. This giant, when they filled it with salt water, it's a giant tank. They built a house set on top of the tank, because it's that big. And the house has a pool that the dolphins would come up through. You can see it in the movie. Uh, and like they had this crazy under camera on a crane that could go underwater so they could lift it out of the water for like this house set they built. on. And at one point, we're like, there's like a four hour wait for a set. But and I'm like, can I get in there? Get I'm in my shorts. It's just a giant black bowl with two dolphins in it. They and they're like, you're, yeah, you're the least of our problems. Get in there. Oh. And like, I'm, 
I get to do that for a while. That was so nice. How old were you, like roughly? Uh oh, eight, nine, I guess. I'd have to look it up. Train dolphins. Yeah, I got to. I could. I know all the gestures to make them do things, and like, like, I like. I can do like every now and then. I'll like go to Sea World, and it's like, hey, watch this, and like, it get them to come over. It's great. It's great. Uh, <laughs> Crunch and Leilani. Because of course you um, do. Look what you've done to her. I know. Yeah. Well, and then Leilani. Crunch and the, were the name of the two dolphins that the. <laughs> Man, you like dolphins some, live a really long time. Somehow you took my They're softest probably still story and made it somewhere. softer. Like Craig and Leilani, they still How? long for you to click at them. They they, they have it, very long memories. I'm sure they live a long time. They'd yeah. be like, "What the fuck did oh. you do to your hair?" Yeah, they live like long <laughs> fifty years. But I they love them. Love it. God, I want this reunion. But. Yeah. Yeah. Internet, but so, and so the so like, crunch and Leilani. We have to reunite them with the little boy. So this was like this was like eighty eight, eighty seven. This was like in the eighties, and and the prop kid, like the prop guys, are were like you a real to do, person? Tells it. No, no, I am absolutely not. Uh, the prop guys at were who were doing the set decorating. There's literally one shot of my room where they like the camera pans, and they were trying to like fill it. They were trying to make it a messy kids' room in the future, and. They found out that I was an anime nerd, which didn't exist yet in the United States, because I, I I came real early. So they were like, I mean, like these these were adult men who understood what Japanese toys were, and I was like, I'm a nine year old who like I I know that, that that's a Tetsujin twenty three. I know exactly what that is. Soul of Chugoken set. Yes, I'm well aware of exactly what that toy is. And they just handed me catalogs. And they're like, highlight anything you want. We're just gonna <gasps> order that shit. And, like, hey, oh, have a this. and they're like, very good taste. Very good, uh, I don't know about that. Very good taste. And oh man, I kept some, and like, I've got to see one on like a three wheel bicycle and they're like, they let me keep so much fucking swag. <laughs> I have to keep so much swag. Oh. God. They were, yeah, that movie was a damn delight. <laughs> I got so many cool toys. If we, if we ever are able to do like, um, a mm. Marf, like a Tony Stark barf, where we could recreate memories. I want to go to oh, that one. It's <laughs> nuts. It's nuts. It, yeah, no, it's that was that was a that was a long gig too because oh, it just it just everything makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like that is yeah. the Rosetta Stone of your life. That is. The I, I mean, like I just remember going. So let me get this straight. This is not even cool. film time. Cool. You're just gonna pay me to not go to school and to go to Marine Land for like a few months. Okay, <laughs> just that's <laughs> happening. Oh my goodness! No, it all it all lands. I mean, you got a tutor and stuff. Yeah. There are sure, laws, sure, but, you know, sure. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, and yeah, that's welcome to acting as a child. Wow, <laughs> man. The number one thing I took from this is we got to find Crunch and Leilani. Like, they're yeah. Oh, that, speaking, now that's all I can think yes. about right so now. Like, where's Crunch and Leilani? There's a, there's no, a real chance we found it. Crunch. No, no, you did not. Stop it! Did you really find Crunch? Don't mess with our hearts. Wait, what? No. Leilani's Come dead, on. but Crunch is alive. And you better Don't not mess with us. You what? Not be they live a with long me. time. Y'all better not be messing with me. Yeah, they really do live like 50, 60 years. Yeah, they, they live long. Oh, oh my young. God. Sephora, you better not be messing with me. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Yeah. Sephora. Say the base. Say Like Satation, yeah. Oh man. Yeah, again, if they were fairly young, there's a real chance. It's just a like, rad name. Gather so your dolphins! Ah! Gather your dolphins! They say say to base. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, I, I love everything that's happening in chat right now. This is, yeah. Oh, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is hilarious. Yeah. No, the phones oh have come god. out. Yeah. It's a gather your party miracle. Oh, say yeah. to base. Say to base. No Where is that? Where is That's the best name I've ever heard. Where's okay. it located? Uh, Sanabase.org. Oh. Slash, uh, Canada. Well, yeah, we're going to go on the Googles. I'm it saying it. We're going to Canada. We're going to Canada. We're going to Canada to reunite a boy and his dolphin. Yes. <laughs> we're going to do it. Tell us that we're going to Canada. No, we're going to. We have to do this. I'll find a con. Like, man. we'll find a con. I was going to say, we'll find a con. We'll find a con. So we'll I do like, anytime I need to go anywhere. We'll find a con. Yes. We're going to find a con. Oh, my yes. God. In return, we're going to get you a Buckaroo Bonsai suit. Yeah. 100%. I'm, I'm going to get a New Jersey suit. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be great. Uh, yeah, but you, you wear the Buckaroo Bonsai suit to the Meet the Dolphins, oh, yeah. though. <laughs> Layers. Yeah. Crunches in San Diego. Crunches in San Diego. Yeah, that would make sense. You could uh, go... During Comic Con, I'm gonna go this. during Comic Con. I'm, gonna set that I'm up. going with you. I'm Do not go without me. Do not go without me to see Crunch. All going to Holy Crunch. I will ruin this house with my anger. Yeah, no, it, go, it occurs to me that I'm now old enough to understand how to actually make something like that happen. Like, like yes. I tried in my twenties. Like, I don't know how to make that happen, but I'm like, I'm in. I'm, I'm mail, now. Ca I, like, mail captured 1982. That sounds about right. Which one is yeah. that one? Uh, 
Crunch or Leilani? SeaWorld San Diego. All right, I'll go yeah. check out. I guess he got he left Marineland and went to SeaWorld. Well, I feel like if he were no He's longer on the time. roster, they... He made it. Uh, yeah. he Marineland made, got, he made Marine it. Land got mostly he pulled up. over. It's a hotel, but they left like one or two of the attractions are still there. Where is that? It's, oh, God. Is it in LA? Did you guys just find the dolphins? We found yeah. the dolphins! <laughs> dolphins. <laughs> Chat found the dolphins. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, they, yeah, the one that's in Canada, yeah. They're at Comic Con? Yeah, yeah. we're, go we're, I we're think going, we're going to see the dolphins! Dolphin. We're fucking doing this, Jack. Oh, yeah. 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 Delaware. Tell us, and they said to periscope it as well, which I think is oh. fitting. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. We're no, doing this. No, no, yes. I'm going to one up. Can we, tell, can we tell them? You guys, we have. No. 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 Never mind, no. no. We'll, do, we'll, do we'll do something. We will do something. We'll do You'll come with us also. You will come with us. Yes. You're part of the fellowship. You I, will be with us. I cannot believe this. I know. Yeah. Chad is scary. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. You guys are amazing. I'm yeah. trying to think if I've any lost like, relatives I want to them. find them. Find them. <laughs> I was watching the show on the way out the front door and I was like, wait, what? Leilani has a daughter. Leilani has, has, has a daughter. Has what? A daughter. Oh my gosh. What? What? Oh my, my god, Dallas. She probably like grew up hearing stories about the little boy. I'm like, what if it looks like you? What if Leilani's child looks like you? What if they named the baby Talison? Guys, Six weeks to Dolphin Reunion. Wow. This is like the Toon 3. This, this, this is, is this is science going far enough. This is, this is <laughs> look look what we can do with our technology. This, this is it. Yeah. This yeah, is amazing. Yeah, it's it's amazing. It was <laughs> that is that assumes a lot of wait, the relationship. Wait, this isn't necessary. a gas leak, right? Right. No, yeah. I sure hope not. Because we're all yes. we're all this laughing is. a lot. Yeah. If anyone starts turning pink. Yep. You're about to die. Oh so, my god. Well, he's pretty pink right now, though. I don't uh, know. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna, gonna do this. We're gonna do this. No, do not see that dolphin without this me. Oh no. Dude, you. dude, seriously, if so that if that dolphin if that so dolphin if you if you do the hand the same hand gesture and that dolphin comes to you, dude, that's gonna be That's gonna be nuts. That is gonna make I'm news. almost I I'm just thinking even. about it, I'm like almost tearing up. That, <laughs> I that would like, be that, gonna make that would be absolutely magical. You see how I was trying to describe what this show was to you and I was like, there's no way. That would be there's no way to describe. This that show. would be so pure. It would it's turn so pure. my void of a heart into something real. Yeah, I don't well, think know, I could. Me, I have to say that'd also, be if, if sunglasses the, off because this is so intense. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that'd yeah. just be amazing. But I would just like to say, as the other wow. side of the internet, also if the dolphin just bites the shit out of you, that's <laughs> so also, <laughs> fantastic. Also funny. Also, also fantastic. Also funny. Also it's funny. Also like funny. The, moment, right. the, moment, the, the moment you show up, the moment you show up. <laughs> Uh, the, the dolphin is like, we meet again, Jackie. No, no! <laughs> the one fan. <laughs> I've waited, I've waited years for this you know, day. Cause, cause Cause humanity is writing on this. Keep no, it pure. Like, on all these years. What is happening to this show? You think you're just coming to our sea pool and take your shorts with you? No, <laughs> those were our toys you took. Exactly. <laughs> No. Oh, Wait a minute. See you in hell, Let's Jeffy. see. I want to see the oh. fan art to that. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah. no. Yeah. I gotta go take care of a girlfriend. But right. that. that <laughs> Tell was, her about the dolphins. Tell her about the dolphins. Yeah. I can't believe. it. Either way, we're uh, doing this. Yes. We, we we know. Wow. Well, there's no way to no. top this. I know. No. I don't even know. Like I don't I even just, know. So how I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna go. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're done. I think it's all right. I mean, we all leave. I think. Wow. Go to. Wow. Can we go to see right now? Right now. Yeah. Right now. We're this breaking out, out, Crunch. I can't do anything in my life until this happens. <laughs> We're going to break out, Crunch. It's like Free Willy. We're going to go to the ocean. Aren't, aren't most of us going to be a Comic-Con? Yes, this, yeah, no, yeah. This can, this can happen in a month. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make some phone calls and I'm gonna see if I can pull this shit together. Okay. Uh, all right. Gather your dolphins. Gather your dolphins. You heard it here first, folks. Gather your dolphins. I'm cool gun. <laughs> <laughs> this is. I have lost control of the situation. It, yeah. Yeah. If if oh if, uh, if it remembers you, I'm. Yep. I'm gonna cry and I'm very again. curious to see if it still works. I will be a changed man. I, I will believe in humanity. Yeah. Or the dolphin? dolphin? Yes. The dolphin will restore It's the humanity. only connection that I that I need. It's true. It's true. Uh, oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, that will that will be a, a, a definitely a, a, a sign. Wow. That that be a there. That'll be a thing. Yeah, man. Oh man. Did, yeah. did, wait, okay. Well, so I mean, but the timelines, the timelines, and the, the, the timelines, the name and the location lines up. Didn't have any like any identifying features that would be like that is definitely. 
Um, I got pictures, so and they were definitely you could tell them apart. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> the, like everybody's broken and it hasn't happened. Dolphins, yet. dolphins, so dolphins scar up a bit, so you actually like they, yeah. they get like yeah. a, they they have like a they have a look. Yeah, yeah it's like a little scar of his red. Right it's just not little. They got big motherfucking scars. Yeah. They get big white bite like scratch marks. Oh, Leilani's daughter's name. I can't see. Oh. It looks like a Hawaiian. Kainalu. Kainalu. I'm. I, you guys. Guys. I have to return Erica to at least reasonable working condition oh, to the factory. I'm in a very emotionally fragile state. I have a deposit down, and this is not helping. I'm like, do we need to talk about Akira now just to bring it back? Like, we haven't talked about Akira. Tetsuo, I can just yell what Tetsuo if, and Kaneda and run back and forth on the screen. What if he remembers <laughs> everything? What if he remembers <laughs> everything? Oh, stop it! Your monster, stop it! Yeah. Stop it. Stop. Yeah, sorry. You broke Erica. Stop. I'm glad that you also discovered my other great joy in this show, which is making me happen. Yeah, it's fun. I know. It's yeah. just great. No, this has to happen, though. It, it really does. It's happy tears. Yeah. It's Pixar. It's, it's Pixar tears. It's Pixar tears. Yeah. Yeah. Pixar tears. Yeah. You can make a movie out of this. 100%. Oh, God. No, we're going to make a movie Stop out of this. Yes. <laughs> She's already dead. Oh, God. <laughs> just remember, Stop Erica, it. Just remember, what if feelings had feelings? <laughs> yeah. What if feelings had feelings? Yeah, we're an inside out now. Yeah, here it is. Yeah. Kind of oh. making it worse, lol. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. I just, I want to see if I could push, push the humans. I feel, I feel like that'd be a good name for Wait, like your, sorry. for your biography. Speaking of the singularity, like how it makes it worse. who's talking right now? Uh, I'm. It's nothing. I'm a normal, normal person. No, we just refer to everyone else in the room as the humans. What? You. What is that? Ma'am, you are mistaken. He's gonna swing. Oh. That way the other way now. That. that what? That. That didn't. Didn't occur that way. It's no. no. Internet. No, they, 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 they don't play it back for us. They don't care. It's not about me anymore. This is about reuniting a young boy <laughs> with this dolphin companion. Has anyone ever seen Kyle actually not plugged into a wall? Mm. Just saying. There is a USB somewhere on me right now. He's always plugged into something. Mm. Do you have mobile hologram technology, or are you limited to like certain preset environments? Uh, well, like my emotional state, I like, to, I like to I like to project a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was gonna. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Really I did. Good. I do remember turning a corner and just hearing you like mutter Showtime synergy at one point, and I was wondering what that was. <laughs> Thank you for being. I didn't think anyone was listening. It's the laugh I needed. It's the laugh I needed. That's... We didn't talk about Jim. There's. I'm there is, sorry. by the way, yeah, like uh, um, uh, some friends of ours just did a Jeff and the Holograms f uh, fan film. Oh which is pretty, yeah, pretty it's wonderful sci-fi. Yeah, yeah, it's really <laughs> great. Solid, awesome sci-fi. Well, when I was growing so up, like, that, that was like the, fan the, film. The, the secret that all the, little boys, all the little boys, all the little boys <laughs> watched Jim, but just didn't talk about it. It's Jim gold, right glitter and gold. It's yeah. gold, yep. glitter and gold. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. What? Yeah, yeah. what? Yeah. No, yeah, what? What? What, bro? What? Yeah, I watched. Oh. I, 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 I didn't buy the merchandise because I, I was a little iffy on some of those toys. But I, God, I love the show. I had I, the earrings. I think yeah, I had the, the, little, the little light up, the, the, yeah. the light up ones. I feel like most people that are north of like definitely 35, maybe as little as low as 30, if you just go, ooh, jam. <laughs> jam! There it is, yeah. everybody yeah. knows. Yeah. Uh, our producer is telling us no. no. That was oh, less yeah. than right. three not seconds. That, not that. Not that's that. true. The Misfits, less their songs were better. The Misfits were really good. The Misfits were really good. 100%. Actually, I, I, there was also it had, there was a weird subgenre to, to um, cute things with, with holograms, which was the. was and, there was a weird. Did anyone else see the animated Poochie film? Since we're here, wow. Poochie the the dog, the little pink puff dog that had like a, a, an AI unit attached to it, what? very much oh. like the cat from outer space, like 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 Disney's cat from outer space, but animated. That oh, so he solved crimes. It was a whole thing. Okay, maybe I'm getting a little oh. too off track. Uh, also, if you enjoy narrative-based games uh, and also uh, science fiction and robots and free the robots? examination of robots. robot free will, uh, Detroit Become Human is. In, I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. So you should definitely. Yeah. Well, we got three minutes. Let's get into free will for a second. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Well, we can make it just as far in three minutes as three hours. You know? Yeah. 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 Eleven years late to the party, but it turns out Mass Effect is real good. Oh yeah. yeah. It, that, that, that's the a stories are true. That's yeah. a foundational yeah. game for me. That's that's oh, one. Nice. That's one of the, the the Mass Effect series, especially number two, is in, at least in terms of, we haven't really talked about video games. Yeah. Very much. No, there's yeah. a lot oh, to talk about. But uh, so this, the Mass Effect series is. Hard-ish sci-fi, and and mm -hmm. so I gra I gravitate towards it. Um, and it's you're right, it's fantastic. It's narrative choice based, and it's a it's a great game. Video games yeah. are really good for science fiction because oh, yeah. it's it's all about toolkits. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and like, obeying your own rules is, is mm-hmm. a thing you design around and make specific challenges out of, which tends to help in the building of those narrative I, 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 I Somehow we managed to, by the way, burn through all of our time, mostly through pure oh dolphin God. joy. <laughs> no, and um, like also, Horizon Zero Dawn, Dawn while I'm shouting. Horizon Zero Dawn is amazing. That was my, that was my favorite that game the year it came out. Wow, what a great yeah. story. Oh, uh, well, great great, great, great performance. Aloy's so good. <laughs> the, the story was fresh and entertaining. And, uh, no, I was, yeah. that was like, no, that, I will admit, I had some VOMV of like, oh, fuck, And it's beautiful. So oh, it's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, but since, it, since we're running out of time and we have to uh, go on with our day, why, why don't we... If all of us can introduce ourselves one last time, and please tell our lovely audience where they can find you on Not a Friday Night. Uh, starting in the back. The internet's the same for Amy Dollar. Yep, uh, well, we're done now. Uh, <laughs> uh, Amy Dollar, you can find me at Busy Amy. You can find me here on Show of Tomorrow and Weave and Wednesday Club, where we talk about books. Uh, and I stream on my own. I'm playing Mass Effect and talking about books. Uh, B. Dave Walters, Watch Primer. Watch Primer. Like, it starts slow, but it'll blow your mind. Um, everywhere on the socials at B. Dave Walters. I'm doing junk for D and D now. Ask your black geek friend. Where life frontier. I do things and I say words. Oh, I'm Aliza Pearl, and uh, uh, follow me on uh, Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Um, I do a lot of stuff here, Nerdist and Geek and Sundry Star Trek RPG, and I also do a lot of improv and sketch and comedy stuff. So just follow me, and I post links to stuff. Chat does have a picture of Crunch ready to go, by the way. Oh, oh we gotta God. see Crunch. Uh, uh, after after show. Oh, 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 anyway, after show. Uh, don't kill Chat. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm Kyle Hill. I do a show called Because Science for Nerdist and now has its own channel since February. Yeah. We, we just crossed 400,000 subscribers Yay! on YouTube. Uh, so uh, that's awesome. Search for me. I'm not on the Dallas Mavericks. I mean, you are, though. But Except yeah. when you are. Yeah. I mean, like when I was, when I was playing. Uh, but right, yes, right. you can find me. Just search my name, you'll find it. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Aaron Gaiji. I'm Talis and Jaffe. And we'll see you next week. Take care of yourselves. We're going to gather your dolphins. Yes. <laughs> crunch, 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 crunch,